All right, everyone. The moment that, uh, well, I can tell you I have been waiting for all day. Now, today was an unbelievable day. Today was the day that I had the privilege of attending the technical briefing meeting regarding the new, let's see if we can get it in here. I've got so many, I've got so many different windows. Let's see, which one am I going to show you guys here? <laughs> this one right here is what I wanted to show you. The new PR programs, international students, essential workers. This is a little bit of a rough start, guys, but I have been going nonstop all day. If I showed you what I had going on today, you would be blown away. Regardless, after much, much anticipation, we finally, well, I can tell you, I have an unbelievably crystal clear idea of exactly what this is going to look like. So many questions that people have been asking. I now have the answers to them. And this Q&A today on the new TR to PR pathways in Canada, temporary residence to permanent residence for international students. And really, we could call them we could call them international graduates, but now it really is international students. We have them, and I'm going to pull this up right here. As you can see, we have an unbelievable future for people who never anticipated that it was going to be here. Those people that are essential workers, those that are international grads, those that have been working on the front lines, devoting so much um, of their time to protect the rest of us in Canada, you guys are now all being rewarded. And my goodness, oh, essential grads, you, you students have got this massive opportunity that I never envisioned. So in this live today, I'm going to go through and I'm going to really answer your questions. I'm going to reveal all of the things people want confirmation on. Why? Because I finally was able to attend the technical briefing with immigration as well as other members of the Canadian Bar Association, Acadie, and uh, KPIC, the consultant organization. We've disseminated all that information to all of the other lawyers, and now it's your turn. So I will see you guys in a second. I couldn't help but brand it, right? You've got to brand it. So we are, an <laughs> this is hilarious, Aziz. My friend, I will explain. Yes, you're eligible. You are eligible under multiple programs. And I will connect with you, Aziz, absolutely. Okay, so here's how this works, you guys. We are uh, in this live today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and do a deep dive into each of these programs. The Q&A portion, I am going to make sure that everybody gets their questions answered. Okay? Now, I'm not sure what's going on, um, you know, in all of your lives. But this is the time that I'm going to be devoted to these programs, to answering your questions. So I know lots of people are pumping in the questions really fast. But essentially what I want to do is I want to go through the very, very high points first. And then we're going to dive into those technical questions. There, there, there's, I'll explain exactly how the program will work. I'll explain the, the forms that are required, the process that's involved. I'll go through all of this in detail for you. So hang tight. Now, where do we start with? I want to actually start. Uh, I'm just going to flip this over here and we will pull off Aziz's comment for the time being. Aziz, I had to pull you up there. We've got so many people that are connected. Lori, who is a part of the class right now. Lori is a part of my express entry class that I just finished from five to six today. I am going to, because all of you guys, I'm going to, I'm going to actually shift over here and I'm going to show you my screen. Because there is clearly so many people that want information on this, so many people that need help. There's so many questions that are unanswered. I have created a PR for international students and essential workers and French speakers, a master class designed to help you guys get through this, just like my Express Entry one. And Lori, you can tell everybody what the course is like. All you have to do is go here, go to my site, click on the, the Canadian, uh, the, the Whole Thing Immigration Law right here, Go to my Healthy Immigration Law site, HealthyLaw.com. I think the link is below. When you're here, you can click on this link and it will take you to the registration for the course. Put your name, email address in there. I am going to be working on this course this weekend. So that is live and you guys are going to be able to register, jump in. You're going to be able to start working on everything right away before May 6th. So while all the other people are 
putting together their nice little webinars and things like that, I am going to launch a full course to help people navigate their way through. Why am I saying this? Because there are limited spots. You guys know what those spots are. 20,000 for the healthcare workers. You've got 30,000 for the essential workers. And then you have 40,000 for international grads. Okay, so those are all the programs. And there are so many things that are available, but it is a mad rush. It is gonna be crazy as people are trying to get their applications into the queue. And I'll be honest, I am blown away. We have over 453 people right now that are watching live. Go ahead. Let people know that we've gone live because this is going to be the one source where you can actually get the information. You don't have to pay me anything. I'm not asking for anything from you. This is purely a way for me to give back to all the amazing people on the front lines in Canada who were sacrificing themselves for all of us, putting themselves in harm way, who were who literally were on the front lines in a, in a time when we needed you most. And I'm so proud of our government for doing this. I know that there's a lot of people, outlanders, that are frustrated, that are, can't figure out what's going on. I want you guys to know that all you have to do, go back here and on the YouTube, actually, you guys can see, I'm not going to do a deep, deep, like I'm not going to dive into all of the issues essentially associated with, like if we go here and I open this up, you can see I have done previous videos already. Are you eligible? This goes into detail into the specific requirements of the program as we knew them at that time. If you go back just a little bit further and you go to this yellow one here, the breaking news, the one that's got 16,000 views, that is a detailed breakdown as I go through the actual occupations that are that are, that are used to, to um, uh, under the essential workers and the healthcare. So go there, check those out, because right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to go through and demystify all of the points and I know you guys have got all these questions and I will get to these questions, but it's probably best that I go through and explain the finer points that I know everybody's asking. And then once we get to that, then I will dive to the q and So, so pay attention. Let's start right off the bat with um, the program. Okay. So for the beginning, initial graduate stream, uh, sorry, the international graduate stream. Okay. You must have completed your education. That's the first thing at a DLI no earlier than January, 2017. If you completed your education before January of 2017, really January the 1st, it doesn't count. You don't, you're not eligible for this program, but you may be eligible for this one right here, the international workers. Now understand these two programs, the why, the reason I'm focusing on international graduates and on um, the essential workers is because the, because of the caps, you guys don't have any time to spare. It's all of the French speakers with the three French speaking programs. You guys are lucky because there are no caps. There are no caps available that are going to block you. So as long as you've scheduled your francophone, you've scheduled your test, your French speaking test, you will have until, um, until November to submit your application. So there's no rush for you guys. And I will create a course for you. I will. Well, I'll create videos and tutorials and things, but ultimately I have to stay devoted and focused on these fine folks right here, international students. And I say students because even students right now, as opposed to grads, can still qualify. More coming about that in a second. Let's go back here and let's go through these requirements. International grad stream, you have to have qualified. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions, if you have an associate, a bachelor or a master's degree, the degree alone, you only need eight months of in duration, okay? If it's a degree. If it's not a degree, if it's a um, if it's a diploma, a certificate, or some other form of attestation, then it has to be a minimum of 16 months combined. So two-year program or two one years that amount collectively to 16 months. Why did they say 16 months versus one year, two year? Because most programs are completed in eight months, right? So you go to school September, you graduate April, voila, you're done. Well, if that's for a certificate diploma, then you're not gonna, it's not gonna work. Only degrees can you qualify with eight months in duration. The diploma certificates, attestations, those, those, um, those uh, lesser credentials, you need two years, okay? That's first point. CLB, it's five across the board for all, all abilities, okay? Uh, you can see you're, you have to be employed at the time in which you submit your application and at the time in which you receive your approval. You have to have been paid with a valid work permit or authorized to work. And this is the best part of all you guys. Authorized to work 
That literally means that you can count all of your work history while you were on a valid study permit. So if you're looking specifically at this program right here, you complete your graduate, you, you complete your education. Okay. That's fine. You've got that credential. And, and when it comes to employed in Canada with a valid permit or authorized to work, you can be employed on student status. So it seems kind of weird that I would be saying this, but I have some clients that completed a credential before. They completed a degree before. Maybe they couldn't get a job because of the pandemic. Now they're back in school and you know who you are because I've had consults with you already. And now you're asking, well, I'm in school, but I still have a study permit. Does that count? Yes, it does. So you just have to be employed. Where? Well, who cares where? You could be an underwater basket weaver as long as someone was employing you as an employee to do it because you can't be self-employed. You can't be a self-employed underwater basket weaver and count, but you have to be employed at the time in which you submit your application and when you receive your approval, okay? You have to reside in Canada with a valid temporary resident status. If you're out of status or illegal or not in Canada currently, I'm sorry, you don't have an option. You have to be in Canada. Um, you can see that you can be eligible to restore your status, so there still is a possibility with that, but I'll be honest, how can you show that you're eligible to restore and still be employed or paid? We haven't quite figured that one out because technically, well, no, technically, legally, if you're in a restoration period, it means you're out of status. And if you're in a restoration period, that means you can't work. So that was the one we didn't get clarified and I'm still going to work on that one, but it's only going to cover a bunch of, uh, a very, very few bunch of people but you've got to reside in Canada and then intend to reside in a province or territory outside of Quebec. That basically means that if you are living in Quebec, all is not lost. You still have a shot of getting this to work. So if you're in Quebec and you're wondering, can I qualify? Can I count my, my Quebec-based education, my Quebec-based uh, employment? Well, technically you can, but it's going to be a hard sell. You need to really, really show how you have a job lined up. You're ready to go to that other job and all that it requires is that you get your permanent resident status. And if you are currently working and employed in Quebec and you're living there, when you submit your application, it's going to be really hard. And what's required? A settlement plan that's rock solid that shows you have a clear pathway forward. It's not going to be easy for you guys. It is not, but it may still be possible. And in the link below, there should be a spot to book a consult with me if you need help with that. That is a very, very complex area and I would never recommend that you do that alone. Never go alone. I also want to point out here while I'm on the, you know, while I'm showing you all the things that we have, those of you who don't know my firm, we offer a collaborative review model for our clients. We rarely actually represent or put people through our representative portals. We support DIYers at heart who want to do their applications themselves. And if you go to our site, click on my approach. I'm not going to spend any time on this. I just want to make you aware of it. This collaborative review approach will show you exactly how we work hand in hand with our clients so that they drive the ship, they have control over their application, and we're there to support them all along the way, teaching you, educating you, answering your questions, all these things. So go here, check it out, and you can see our collaborative review model because here's the crazy thing about this. This model works perfect with the way the government is, is setting this program up. I'll get into the nuts and bolts in just a few minutes about how this is actually going to work, but I want to dive a little bit more into eligibility, okay? So we have gone through here, and I'm going to pull this up again. Okay, so like I said, these are all the requirements for the international grad stream. Now let's flip over here, and actually, I want you guys to do this, okay? I want you to give me a thumbs up. You know, the reality is I produce awesome content on this site, but I'm not a marketer. I don't have some sophisticated paid promotions or anything like that. So give me a thumbs up and subscribe. That's what makes a difference so that other people, including the four, 579 people watching this live, this is crazy. Okay, continuing on. I want to make this as quick and as efficient as possible because you guys can go in and you can read yourselves. Essential workers. This is the game changer. This is the thing for all you international students, which now opens up possibilities that may never uh, you never may never have thought were possible, okay? So essential workers, you have to have at least one year of full-time work experience or the equivalent in part-time, which equates to 1,560 hours in the past three years. So what does that mean for you? Okay, well, 
Have you gained that work experience while you were studying when you were working up to 20 hours a week during your school, full time in the regular scheduled breaks? Can you accumulate one year in that three years? And if so, you guys have an opportunity. And all I can do right now is just do this right here. Oh boy, I better turn my sound effects on. <laughs> I turned those off. There we go. Yes, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I wanted to cheer there. So the reality is study work experience gained while you were studying, which is valid, authorized, authorized, legal work experience. It does not count for CEC. It does not count for express entry, but it does count for the new TR to PR pathway programs. Temporary resident to permanent resident pathway programs. And I also want to emphasize with you guys, I want to emphasize this to you. These programs are temporary. They are creatures of Canada's public policy. The provisions within the act that are specifically geared 25-2, that's, I think 25-2 is what it is, geared towards the minister's freedom to create a program that's in the best interest of our country based on public policy reasons. That's why this program exists, but it is temporary. It is finite. It will come to an end, right? It is only valid. I have my technical briefing notes right here from the government. You can see right here, smiley face right beside the picture. Look at that. There's a happy person. Look at how happy they are. That's the briefing notes that the government gave me this morning and uh, before our call. And there is high level stuff that's in here. And all of this, you guys, I do not hoard it. I share it with you. So, but understand this temporary program, it starts May 6th, it ends November 5th, full stop. Any of these programs, these ones right here, international student, essential worker, the, these programs right here have caps, okay? Once those caps are met, then it doesn't matter if it's still up until November the 5th, the program will close. Only the Francophone programs, the French speakers, is it going to be open with no caps? Okay, you can see where the priorities of the government are. Okay, let's jump back here and keep going. Work experience, so at least one year full-time, it can be also accumulated part-time, but it needs to be 1,560 hours in the past three years, and it must be one year. So you can accumulate it by working 60 hours in eight months. That doesn't work. It's the same pattern as the Canadian Experience class, when you're trying to accumulate those points in Canada, you must work for a full year. If you're working part-time, then that means you must work for two years, okay? So that's how it's structured. Now, work experience stream A. To accumulate the work experience, if you're going through the health-related occupations, you can only pull from Annex A. So if you are stream A, and when I go through the eligibility requirements, let's shift over here right now. I've got so many pages on the go right here. We'll shift over to the public policies right here and we will choose the one associated with um, the work experience in essential occupations. We have essential occupations for, for French speaking foreign nationals. Um, we've got a ton. We've got the post-secondary uh, institutions right here. We've got a ton of information on each of these categories and this is where you can go to get more information, okay? So when you open up these occupations and you know what, maybe what I'll do is I'll go back to the main screen. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And then let's go. This is the main announcement. If you're wondering, Mark, where are you getting this information? Right here. New Pathways, 90,000 Essential Workers, International Grads. And I apologize I'm talking so fast. There's so much that I want to get through. But if you're going through the healthcare profession and I open up this link, it will take us right here to Annex A. Okay, Annex A, these are the eligible occupations. So when I go back here to my screen right here, you can see that if you want to qualify under for health-related occupations, all of them have to be in Annex A for obvious reasons, right? They're health-related. And Annex A is the, um, Annex A has the list right here of those occupations. Nurses, registered nurses, specialist physicians, dentists, occupational therapists, cardiologists, denturists, psychologists, you know, home support workers. And these ones are the, the, the cool ones, the ones where they are low-skilled that did never have an opportunity Big shout out to you, home support workers. Big shout out to other occupations in health services, to nurses' aides, to dental assistants. All of these are NOC C and D, low skill occupations. All the rest are skilled that may otherwise have had a CEC opportunity. But you guys here that are low skill, big shout out, big bomb. This is so unbelievable that the federal government would give you guys a shot. 
I, I'm just, I can't tell you guys how happy I am that they were so like forward thinking. Now, the reality is I appeared before the standing committee last November and I specifically told them, you guys can go back and watch my testimony in the standing committee on immigration. I told them that they needed to create pathways for workers on the front line that were putting themselves out there in danger, their health in danger, all to make sure that we were getting our groceries on time, that where our food was being harvested from the from the fields, that our 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 elderly were being cared for in those homes, right? Okay, zipping through. So stream A, all of your work experience must be in Annex A. Stream B, which is the other essential occupations, either Annex B or A, it can be a combination of both of them. So what that means is when I flip back to my screen here, you can use occupations in Annex B, all of these ones, and this is what I just love, you guys. Look at these. These are all low skill. Cashier, service station, store shelf checker. You bet. Thank you for stocking my grocery shelves. Other sales-related occupations. These are all skilled, skilled, but they're all trades. And how many draws have we had for the Federal Skilled Trade Program? Like one last year of 250 people. That's insane. Now they all have pathways. Big shout out to all of these people here. All of those trades, like it hits on all of them. It's absolutely unbelievable. Installers, and then the truck drivers, the bus drivers, the taxi limousine. I want to point out something to the taxi and the limousine drivers, okay? The delivery services. Even though you were on the list, even though you're on the list, you guys, you must remember, as I jump back to the main screen here, you must remember that excluded right here under my list, um, uh, number two, you can see no self-employed. So full stop there, guys. So if you're one of those individuals that is right here, one of these taxi drivers or delivery or courier that's working, excuse me, wow, that's working as self-employed, sorry, you do not qualify. It's, you're, just, you're just blocked. You can't submit an application. But heavy equipment, you can see railroad yard and track maintenance workers, water transport, boat and cable ferry operators, all of these, you can see these are all, anything that is a, a um, anything that's a three, two, or one is skilled. Anything that's a four, five, six is low skill. That's how I can tell exactly what these are. Other trades helpers. This is like open for people working on the construction sites, public works, railroad motor, har oh, this near and dear to my heart, harvest laborers. You guys can see all this, okay? And you can go through even mail carriers, Big shout out to all you guys. So I went through all of this and I apologize that I'm, I'm going through it again, but this is all important so that you can understand what this really means. So if you're going through stream B, which is for the essential occupations, you can actually pull from both the stream A stuff, the Annex A, the health stuff, and Annex B to accumulate your one year for stream B. But if you're going through and health related is the is the the, the quota that you're going through that that twenty thousand for that category, um, you um, you have to pull everything your work experience from a knock that's contained in there. Can you mix them up? Can you mix them up? Yes, you can. You can combine them for multiple occupations as long as they fit within the annex associated with it. Okay, does that make sense? Now here's another thing that I want to share you share with you as I go through here. You can go through this program. You can go through this program. You can go through the Francophone program. You can go through the Canadian Experience class. You can do all of them at the same time. Literally, you can submit them all. Now, the reality is with the processing fee, it's going to be the 1,040 or, <coughs> excuse me, 1,050. So they're actually reverting back to the processing fees that were at the level before they did, they did the big jump. So you just have to pay all the processing fee up front, but you can apply in as many streams as you want to. And I'll be honest, like the biggest thing right now is that with express entry, there is that stupid R10 rule, regulation 10, which allows them to kick your application back because you submitted the wrong police certificate or you submitted a black and white copy of a German police certificate when it was supposed to be color. They can just return it. You're hooped. That doesn't exist with this program. So eligibility, they will not refuse at the beginning because your application is incomplete. What does that mean? They're still going to assess for eligibility. And if they return it, they're going to take your processing fee. $1,040, poof. You lose your spot in the queue and the whole cap is disappeared. Now, while I'm talking about this, I'm going to fill in the pieces. How do you know if the cap is filled? 
every person that submits an application and I'll explain the actual workflow in just a little bit. I'll explain the actual forms that you need. I'll explain all of the documents as well as we get through this. This is gonna be the bomb, you guys. I'm serious, I'm gonna reveal everything. Now, some of this stuff, I guess I could potentially be a little bit, a little bit off, but I've got an extremely good idea of exactly what this is gonna look like. Okay, so back to the, the discussion here. You have the ability to, pro to process your application through as many streams as you want. And if I have a fear that they're just gonna kick my CEC application back because I, maybe I missed something, I'm gonna absolutely pursue every pathway I can. How do you know when you have to quit? You know, how do you know when you have to back off one of them? Well, they'll tell you. And if they come back and say, Mark, you've got three separate PR applications in the queue, you need to make a call. Well, then I will at that stage. But until they force me to, there's no regulation that prevents you from having multiple applications. They just can't create some barrier just because they feel like it or because they're sad because you're taking up a spot. But understand, that's how it works. On the website, when you go, there's a separate portal. Oh, I'm giving it away. I'm giving it away. I'm not going to do that yet. You guys have to wait. On the website where you register and where you log in, it's not my CIC, you guys. It's different. Okay. When you do that, there's going to be a running tally that will show the amount of, of applications that have been submitted. All it takes is to submit an application for one of those spots to disappear, which really sucks. I'll be honest, it really sucks because there's going to be some stupid people that file their applications frivolously thinking they have a shot when they didn't contact me, they didn't watch this video, they submitted an incomplete application. It's eventually going to get refused at the end of the day. They're going to lose their $1,040 and then they're going to have burned up a spot for someone like you who actually qualifies. That's what irritates me a little bit about this. But with that being said, that is why you guys, that's why I went here and that's why I have gone out of my way right here. If you go back to the homepage, all you have to do is click on this link right here. This is my new DIY course. There's no way I can represent everybody, but my master classes where I give you the tools, the, the, the DIY course that I create here. If you leave your information, full name, email address, you'll get notified. I'll let you know when the course is going live. My Canadian Immigration Institute has a ton of courses on here. And if you click on see our courses, there's a lot in the works, but this is the one, the new PR pathways for international students and essential workers. Click on this one to get notified. Those of you who are already in the course right now for express entry, that one's going live and I open it up. There's tons of videos that all guide you through the whole process. And the best part of all is the masterclass with me where you come in, you get to answer your questions live. And any of my people that are watching these, um, this video that are in the class, Oh my goodness, we have 641 people watching this live. Any one uh, of the, the folks that are in my course right now, people don't trust anything, do they? Mark, what the heck are you doing? Your course, I can get all my free information online. Well, guess where you're getting your information from? It's right here, the source. And when you subscribe to the course, the TR to PR Pathways course that I'm creating, and I'm probably going to wrap this sucker up this weekend now that I know exactly what IRCC is going to do. Um, I'm going to create this course. You register, you watch, you go through the videos. There's tutorials to tell you exactly how to fill out the forms, common places, problems, pitfalls. There'll be document checklists. There's going to be tools to help you make sure that your knock code is chosen properly. And ultimately, there's going to be me in the master class where you will have the ability to ask me personally those questions in a private Facebook group that's only for the people that register. In this, when I get to these questions, and there are probably 100 questions posted now, it's, there's no way I can do a deep dive. But the reason I'm taking time to explain this, <laughs> not that one, the reason I'm taking time to explain this is so that I can bypass the questions that relate specifically to what I've already discussed. So what did you just learn? That the process, every submitted application brings down the cap one closer to being filled, okay? So you have to pay attention to that. Be very, very careful with that because... Um, Anyone who's submitting frivolous applications is going to spoil it for everyone else. I sure hope they don't. Okay, essential workers. One year within the past three, you must uh, your work experience has to be in one of these annexes, depending upon the stream that you went through. You have to be currently employed. This is the beautiful part. You can be employed at anything. The current employment can be in anything. Underwater basket weaving, whatever you want, as long as you are employed. You can be employed part-time. You can be employed full-time. It doesn't matter. You can be employed as a food counter attendant. 
right guys? You can be employed as a food, food counter attendant right now if you meet the other eligibility criteria. If we go back here to the international students, can my current employment as a food counter attendant at McDonald's work? It can for part C here. Employed, paid in Canada, as long as you have your degree um, that, was, uh, that was completed, you can be working in any occupation you want. There's no issues. But for the essential workers, the one-year work experience has to have obtained in either stream A or stream B, just like I've explained here. Okay, CLB, it's super low for essential workers. It's a four across the board. My goodness, that's really low, okay? And then you have to reside in Canada, valid temporary resident status, or be eligible to, to restore. I've already talked about that. I don't understand how you can be in restoration and still be currently employed, but we'll leave that aside. And be physically present in Canada when the application is filed and when the PR is obtained. And finally, intend to reside in a province other than Quebec. Okay, that you guys is, let me go back here. That is a quick flash lightning round for the eligibility requirements for the program. So anyone asking questions about the eligibility, I just explained it all. Now, some of the juicy stuff. Now, some of the juicy stuff. Let's see, I got my big list. And I guess I could, what I could do right now is start answering questions. That's a possibility because I've cleared up some of the most important parts. Like, can I count work experience on, as an international student? Can I, can I participate if I'm outside of Canada, right? Those are the ones that are the most common. Can I participate if I'm laid off? No, you can't. If you're outside of Canada, no, you can't. Can I claim any work history um, as my current employment? Yes, anything that you're working in right now in Canada, you can claim, okay? Can I claim if I, my work experience, if I was a student and I was going to school? Yes, you can. If you were validly authorized and as a student, you can. Okay, I know you guys have got five gazillion. We're up to 663 people watching live. I think I'm, I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm pretty proud of myself. I'm gonna tell you guys again, subscribe, because this video, there's no way I can get through everything, but every single thing that I learn along the way, I'm gonna create a new video. So make sure that you go and check them out. And as I told you already, I've done a lot of the heavy lifting already. I'm gonna flip back here to the screen and show you on the YouTube channel right here that you're watching it if you're YouTube. Facebook people, get on over here to YouTube and watch it right here because this is our live right now. These videos, I've got a really fun one tomorrow with Ronna Lee at, one, at 4 p.m. You gotta check this one out. It's basically Canadian immigration. Canada immigration is crazy. I say no, I love everything they're doing here. Ronna Lee hates it. She thinks they're crazy and well, she never said that, but she is completely on the opposite side and we, her and I are gonna have a showdown. So that's Ronna Lee, you have to check that one out. And this content is gonna be coming fast and furious. And then this is an awesome one for all you express entry folks. Um, my good friend Tamara Moshe Krusher is gonna join me. We're gonna talk about some of the most common pain points in express entry at a level that you've never heard discussed before. So those videos are, are coming. So you need to subscribe and get reminders. Turn the reminder on for these. But I want you to go back and I want you to watch Breaking News, New Canada PR Programs. This one right here, you can see it's already got 16,000. This is a high level overview. And then you can see as well, I've already created other videos that are, um, let's see if we go back here, I gotta shift back. Um, this video right here, um, you can see this one, are you eligible? That's where I dive in really deep, even deeper than I have on the eligibility for the programs, okay? So check those out, they're there to help you. And because the videos are already created, you know, I just did this one today, right? And so TR to PR international graduates and students, I shared some note, some information there. So you're not going to want to miss this stuff because I'm going to be pumping it out fast and furious. That's what I do. Okay, so let's go back here. And like I said, I really want you guys to subscribe and uh, let's drive this channel into the stratosphere because, hey, you're the ones who create the popularity. You're the ones, if you like the content and you feel it's worthwhile, I'm not some poser who immigrated myself, you know, five years ago and now I'm posting generic stuff that really doesn't give any details. This is hardcore stuff. And I think I've already told you guys, I am a Canadian immigration lawyer. I am the national chair of the Canadian Bar Association, which gives me the privilege, the privilege of representing the amazing immigration lawyers across the country. I interface with government. I have meetings with them tomorrow. I'm meeting with the minister and his, uh, the minister's uh, staff um, uh, on uh, next week as well to talk about 
the budget that just got released and the millions of dollars that are being poured into the uh, poured into immigration. Face it, everybody, Canada truly does care about immigrants. Immigrants, newcomers are are a critical component to us lifting out of this pandemic. And so understand of any country in the world, I would hold Canada up against all of them for the they're they're putting their dollars where the their mouth is, essentially. Right. So the new budget released millions of dollars being poured into helping with uh, the immigration portfolio because immigrants are a key component to our economic recovery. Okay, I've talked enough. Now, understand there is no way, you guys, that I'm going to be able to get through everyone's question. It is not going to happen. It's going to be impossible. I will do the best. Please do not be upset if for whatever reason, and we'll take this off here, if for whatever reason I am not able to get to your question, okay? And please do not post your question 10 times, which I'm sure people have already. I will work through them, the ones that look like they are the absolute top questions that will help people and benefit the most. There's 680 people now watching this live. So you can post your questions now and I will go through. If I get any question that's, do I qualify for the program, Mark? I will ring this bell right here, and that's basically legal advice. Assessing your background, I can never do in this live session. I will then promptly point you right over here to this page where you can click and book, and I even have a nice little chat bot on here. So you can book a consult right here, and the fun part about the consult, you can do it right now, even after hours, this, this consult form works. Book a consult with Mark, you click on here, you pick the day. I've got, my goodness, I had three. They're already full. I've got one left tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. The whole day is gone. The 23rd, well, I got a few more on Friday. Okay, but you guys get the picture, okay? The consults here, that's what they're designed when people ask me questions that are these, okay? Questions about do I qualify, am I eligible? No one else on the stream wants to have me go through your own individual situation. We need to stay high level and answer questions that benefit the most people. Okay, let's jump in here. And some of these guaranteed will already be answered. And so I'll go quick. First question, Ahmed, he says, hi, is there are specific jobs that we must occupy to be eligible for the new grad program? Thank you. Yep, you saw, we answered those. They have to fit into those annexes. Um, we'll flip over here to the screen. I'll jump right back into here where we were showing you. Uh, it's this page here, healthcare professions. When you're going through these, you'll see right at the end, all of these occupations are all here, you guys, okay? So they're a part of these instructions. And if you're looking for them, this is what you're gonna search for, okay? And you guys can stop the video, go back. I don't think I have links for it. You can start here by searching for new pathways to permanent residence for over 90,000 essential temporary workers and international grads. Do not trust what you're seeing on these other sites where people are not showing you the source of their information. Don't trust it. The reason I go here, the reason I share my screen is so that you can see right where it came from on the Government of Canada website. You can look it up yourself. This is the core, this is the source. Don't, don't rely on secondary information. My little, um, when I go through here and I post my nice little you know, breakdown, this is my own little breakdown of it, okay? Just for teaching purposes. But I want you to go back and I want you to go here and read it yourself. Educate yourself. Part of what we do within Healthy Immigration Law is we empower and we educate our clients so that they know everything that we know so that together nothing gets missed. Okay, so like I said, you can go right over here. Once you're on this page, you can look up the, the, the actual annexes right here. Uh, for for the, the positions, health-related occupations are Annex A. Other eligible occupations are Annex B. They're listed right here, okay? All right, moving on. And any questions like that, like I said, are going to be, uh, I'm going to zip through them fast because we've already explained it. Okay, so let's see here. Um, okay, here's a good one. Shaw says, so after the initial application, will there be a draw? Nope, there won't. There will not. And now, this is a great segue. This is a great lead-in. To explain, besides after receiving ITA, will the applicant get normal 90 days time period to submit final application? Fantastic. I'm going to give one of these. Right off the bat, Shaw asks a phenomenal question. This is not express entry, you guys. This process will be exactly like this. Step one, okay? You go to the website that's opened up on May 6th it will have one of those goofy little IRCC wizards. You will go in, you will punch your information in, you will explain your situation. I'm a 
I graduated with a two-year diploma. I have, I'm currently employed in Canada. I have a CLB5. Then what it's, what's it gonna do? It's gonna push you to the international grad stream. And then from there, it will then say here, you are, we think you're eligible, right? Just like it does right now for the programs. At that stage, what will happen is then you will register. So you will go in and this is a separate site. Now the site I think is, av is vi available and visible. I'm not gonna show it now because we don't have confirmation exactly, but we have been able to find the site that we think is probably gonna be the one that they're gonna use. But right now it's those who are submitting online um, applications uh, through the, uh, the provincial nominees, through the pilots, it's gonna look something just like that. I'm not gonna waste time explaining it to you, but on May 6th, there will be a separate registration outside of the MyCIC. You will use your personal email. So what does that mean for all the representatives out there? Well, I've got my own feelings about it, but if you are operating and you're not, you don't have a practice like mine, where I use a, if you go back here to the approach, if you do not have kind of a collaborative review approach that I have, well, I can tell you that it's gonna be challenging for you as a representative because the, the portal is based upon the email of the client. So you personally are the one that drives the ship. Hmm. My office and our DIY approach, you know, in DIYers at heart, we love you guys. You're the ones that we offer the support to. This program will involve you registering your own email address, your information, and then you will get into the account. When you're in there, then you will answer the questions. It will say, it will ask you questions about your family, you individually. <clears throat> It'll ask questions about whether or not you're in a common law situation. You know, are you married? And then based on those questions, it will generate the list of forms that you have to fill out and it will list the documents that are required. Now, people are asking, what are those gonna look like? What documents, what forms? Let's see if I can find it. I haven't prepped this up, but we're gonna go here and I can see if I can find it. So let's go PNP paper-based PR. Let's just open it up. Okay, no, I don't want that. I just want paper-based paper -based PR. Let's put in an IRCC. I just wanna pull up this one. Okay, I think this is the winner. Oh, duh. just give me a second. We're gonna find this one. I just opened it up. So seriously, how hard is this? Okay, here's what we're going at for. This is an example, okay? So what is it included in here? If you want a guide, and true, 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 I don't know 100% what's gonna be in here, but this is a good example of what you're likely to expect. So the application package, it will generate a list of forms and a list of documents that you need to upload. Okay, you guys who have applied to extend your work permit know there's that section where it says the 5710, it gives you a link, it says you need to upload the 5710 form for your work permit extensions into this slot. It's gonna be very similar to that, okay? And have I seen this? No, I have not seen exactly what this is gonna look like, but <laughs> I have a very good idea. So let's look at the form. So what are they gonna ask for? Absolutely, IMM8, they're gonna ask for that. They're gonna ask for the dependent declaration if, if that fits your situation. And yes, overseas family members are 100% included and eligible for these programs, okay? Schedule A background declaration, yep, you'll need that one. Additional family information, yep, you'll need that one. Economic class PNP, probably not, but maybe they'll have some other form that's specific for these programs. I doubt it, but these ones, 4A and uh, 4 and 4A, probably not. Supplementary information, your travels, good chance that's going to be there. Separation declaration for minors, yep, that's possible. That could be asked as well if you have overseas dependents from a previous spouse and um, and that spouse says, yeah, the children can travel, then it's possible without me. Well, then that's you'd need that form. Stat deck of common law union, absolutely. If you're in a common law relationship, you'll need to complete that. Use of representative, I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. You know, this process is driven by you. They've set it up to cut representatives out. Now, I shouldn't say that because once you've got all of your forms, there's also going to be documents that are required. What are the documents? Well, let's flip back and I could show you. And you know what? Maybe it's useful for me to go in and I'll show you my course, my express entry course right now that I offer um, that people are working through right now. This is going to be very similar to the course that I'm going to be creating and my course is chock full of all, well, I've got, 
you can see here, 56 lessons to guide people through express entry. The course that I'm gonna launch here on this weekend is very similar to this. Understanding the checklist, you can see I've got here learning the basics. Yep, I'll have learning the basics of the TR to PR. I will have, I probably won't have a module two starting your, with your express entry profile. We don't care about that. We don't have time to worry about that one. Completing your profile and EAPR, this section here will be individual lessons that cover each of the forms that I was talking about right. Well, let's see. I guess they disappeared. <laughs> I'm not sure which one I put it under. <laughs> I've got too many windows open. This one. There will be an individual lesson for each one of these that helps you to understand how to complete it properly based on the eligibility and based on this program. It's not just some generic thing. I will give you tutorial based on this new pathways. So here's what I want to show you, mastering your documents. Right here, these documents are going to be extremely similar to what's required for the program. So think about the eligibility. So right off the bat, you can see passport. Yep, you're going to need it. E-medical, that is one we will see. Government is trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. They have not made any decisions. And in fact, the, the actual guide that is going to instruct you on how to complete this isn't even done yet. Okay, they're still building it. So with medicals, here's the issue. If you have previously taken a medical, there is a chance, do not hold me on this, but there is a chance that they may allow you to have your medical waived if your previous medical was issued in a relatively recent period of time. So it's possible that they may not, it, while you're in Canada, they may not require you to get a new one. If you've never applied for a medical, I think there's a good chance that they will require you to do it. But the likelihood of needing a medical at the front end when you submit your application, personally, I think is extremely low. Let's go through the other documents here, okay? And this is exactly what the course is gonna look like. So, <clears throat> and in every one of these, if I click on it, you will see every one of these has a video associated with it. This video right here is nine minutes and 53 seconds just talking about e-medicals, right? But I always have sample documents and I have instructions all through here. And every single document, is ex that's, that's what the course is going to look at. But right now, what I'm trying to answer for all of you, I'm trying to answer what is going to be required. You've seen the forms. Let's go back and let's talk some more about the documents. The reason I'm showing my course is because this is exactly what's going to be required. Very similar to Express Entry. So we keep going down. E-medicals, yeah, police certificates. Police certificates, you have to understand, as I go into this little tutorial as well, police certificates, you're not, if you're not in Canada, they may not require these up front. They may not require a police certificate up front. But I'm recommending anyone who knows they're eligible, go get your police certificates now. They're not going to expire as long as you haven't returned back to your country. Those police certificates that you request and you obtain while you're here in Canada, you will, those will continue to be valid. They don't expire only if you return back to that country, okay? And you can see here, I'm gonna have all of these. These are all sample documents from all these countries that I've included in here, okay? So all of these sample example documents are all there, but whatever, that's the, the po focus here is what's required. So police certificates, I say yes. Education, you're going to need the education documents if you're under the international grad stream. And what are they going to ask for? They're going to ask for your degree, diploma, or transcript. Now, I want to address this because people will be asking. I know the question will come. What if I don't have my transcript or my degree? What if I don't have it available on by May 6th? Who's going to have it available on May 6th if you just completed your studies in April? Right? It's going to be really tough. The answer is we don't know yet. Now, we know that R10 does not apply. So they're not just going to automatically reject at the front end because you don't have your proof of, of degree completion. And in my mind, every time I'm going to include both the transcript, confirming your, your, um, your, grad, confirming your completion of that credential, as well as the degree or diploma, I include both of them from the Canadian DLI institution. If you do not have them available, this is right now, once again, I'm going to identify that I do not have a clear 100% answer as to what will happen. But if R10 is not available and this is the only thing you're waiting for and you otherwise meet all the requirements and this is your one shot at this, I may roll the dice. I may submit an application and as soon as, and put all the evidence in the world in to show that I've completed it, I've got my confirmation from my school and I'm just waiting on the diploma, I may roll the dice on that, you guys. I may submit it. 
without having it. I may. I'm not firm on this, but if you have nothing to lose, what happens if it gets refused and you're a student and you still have your postgrad ahead of you and you still have three years of work ahead of you? Well, maybe you've got nothing to lose, right? Maybe you take the chance and you roll the dice. So, but this, understand, <laughs> this is not legal advice. This is just one suggestion and there's risks. There's risks that they look at it and say, you didn't have it at the time in which you needed it. And having a credential was a critical component. So therefore we're going to refuse because you were ineligible. You didn't meet eligibility at the time you submitted your application. They, that could happen, but you have to make those decisions. I guess at the end of the day, once again, I'll just point you back to, um, I'll point you right back here to my website and say, well, book a consult and we can help you. And I want to point something out. I am here. But the lawyers in my firm, Alicia, Susan, are exceptional. They are knowledgeable. In fact, they're smarter than I am. And so if you can't get in with me, you are more than, like, they are open and available. I would have pulled them on tonight, but they have lives. Apparently, I don't have a life because I love doing this, up, this stuff so much. But I just wanted to point that out to you, okay? So back, and now let's go back here again. Let's continue on. So there's degrees. Anything outside of Canada, ECA or otherwise, who cares? It does not form a part of the eligibility requirements. So ECAs are, do you need an educational credential assessment for your foreign education? There's nothing in here. It doesn't form a part of eligibility for anything, okay? All right, moving down. Next, records of employment. Yes, 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 yes. This is where the tools and resources that I have are really going to help those who purchase the course because I have a tool to help you calculate your hours of work. In here, I call it my CEC or my FSW, but it's exactly the same tool you're going to use to, to calculate and display to the officer that yes, indeed, you have those 1,560 hours. I have a record of employment checklist, and I can tell you that this checklist right here that I've created, this one, 100% is going to be the exact thing that you're gonna need when you go through this process and make sure that your letter from your employer actually meets the requirements. Now, the biggest thing and the thing I love most is what I call my knock selection tool. This tool right here is designed to help you um, ensure that you've chosen the right knock and you've actually explained it to the officer to make their job as easy as possible. So will you need a reference letter? You bet you will. The reference letter will be a critical component to proving that you, for your essential workers, that you are actually in the right knock code that fits within those Annex A or Annex B. Okay, so that is something to be, you must pay strict attention to it. Everything that's st stated out there with CEC also is in there, okay? Let's keep going through here. What other documents? Offer of employment? Well, you just have to show that you're employed, right? So it's not the level of an offer of employment. It just confirms that, yes, I've got Rahib employed as a, um, as a, as a front desk clerk in, in the hotel, right? Or something like that. I don't even know if that's on the list, okay? Use of rep? Eh, I don't know. I don't know. Digital photos, absolutely. They're going to want digital photos. So make sure you go through and you complete those. I do want to show you guys something here with the records of employment. Okay, this is the fun part. The content is critical, and I've got everything to help with that. But I have here sample reference letters. Uh, I've got a few. I've got about, well, I've got 30 right here. I stopped at 30 because there was no point. And these are all real letters that I've redacted to help you guys understand that what the form of those letters don't use. Okay, I'm going to put here... I'm gonna ring the bell so you guys are all paying attention. Do not use some template that's out there on the internet that people have provided you on how to do your reference letter. Do not, do not use that. Because what happens is everybody uses the same template, everybody's going through this program with the same template reference letter, and then an officer looks at it and says, how in the world do these five out of 10 applications that I'm using all have employers with the exact same reference letter? Then they start to think, hmm, how in the world could this happen? Is this fake? Are these letters, you know, sketch? Like, why would they all be the same? Then they start to question whether or not you are telling the truth because you pulled something off of the, the internet. You used that reference letter, followed the same format. The bulleted points all look the same. All the information is all organized the same. And then, and then guess what happens? The officer thinks, well, did the, did the foreign worker write this letter themselves? I've seen so many of these same templates. So in my course, although I have a template as a guide, I make sure my students do not, under any circumstance, copy verbatim. But the content is what's important, not the form. Okay, let's keep going. 
So we're slowly working through the documents, guys. Okay, birth certificate. Eh, I don't think so. There's nothing in there other than for your dependents, the dependent children in the same way that express entry works. I could see that happening, but you as a principal applicant, no. There's no proof of sibling or family that's a part of this you know, process. So you don't need birth certificates for that, but for any dependent children, yes, okay? Then let's go to my next page and let's see what's on this list. Proof of sibling, no. Proof of funds, no. There's no proof of funds. You're in Canada and I'm almost positive that they're not gonna have settlement funds associated with this. It's gonna be very similar to CEC, okay? And the, the instructions that we've received do not mention anything about needing. And if you go right into these, um, if you go into the, to the, uh, the public policy here, you can see that these, um, there's nothing in these in the public policy directives right here that mentions the need for proof of funds. So we're pretty safe with that, I think, you guys. Okay, next on the list, marriage certificate, proof of common law. Yep. And you guys do not have to stress over listing your spouses as non-accompanying so that you can get enough points to qualify for an ITA. None of that works. You include all your family, you include all your cousins and aunts and uncles. No, I'm just joking. I'm joking. You do not include them. <laughs> They're not dependents. No, you can't include your parents. You can't include your mother, your father, your, your grandmother, your grandfather. You can't include your favorite cousin, um, your favorite cousin, uh, Iqbar, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or your favorite Aunt Shirley. No, you can't include them in your application. It's your dependents, right? Your spouse, common law partner, um, whether you're married or common law, conjugal, your children. 22 is the cutoff. Kids that are under 22, they're good to go. Once they hit 22, no longer dependent. Inside, outside Canada, who cares? All right? Okay, let's jump back here. That was kind of fun. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Okay, proof of name change. I guess there might be a question. I doubt it though. I really doubt it. On the forms, it does ask about uh, proof of name change. I guess... I, I, I don't, I don't think they're going to ask for it. Maybe, I guess this is let, the, proof of name change. I don't know. That's, <laughs> I don't know about that one. I don't think so. Okay. Language test results. Oh yeah. You guys know where we're going with this language test results. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. I wish I had an elephant that I could have pulled onto the screen. If I was, if I didn't, if I, if this wasn't the fourth live stream that I've done today, I would have added some more colorful things in here. Um, like, like this, at least I can make it snow. That's positive. Fortunately, we're just about past snow. <laughs> All right, let's shut that down. We don't need snow anymore. What I'm getting at here is with, with the language test right here, guys, I understand that it's impossible to book. Everything is chock full. Will, the, will, the, will it fill up so quick that you who have your, your, uh, your IELTS test or your cell PIP test booked in July, will it fill up so quick that you will not even have an opportunity to apply? I don't know. All I can say is that if you are a French speaking person and you don't have a Francophone test, you don't have a, T, um, a TF exam or, or one of the French language exams, go and book it and write it because you have until November the 5th to submit your application. There's no caps. If there was 500,000 people that spoke French that wanted to live outside of the province of Quebec, <laughs> Well, there's no caps. As long as you submit your application, it will be processed. But for the rest of you, I understand the issue. I, I really do. I had a client yesterday, I'll be honest, and this is the insanity. I had a client yesterday who said he'd booked his test across the border. Um, I don't know if it was Detroit or where he booked it, but he booked, his, he booked his IELTS test on the other side of the border. And so he was flying down to take the test and then he was going to come back in quarantine. So... Some people are going to unbelievable lengths to try to get their exams and how ridiculous, right? I sure hope that they make some accommodation, but I'll be honest, in our, in our technical briefing today, mm -mm, no accommodation. And this is one of the things that, you know, if I flip back to the YouTube channel and I go to uh, the ones that are scheduled here with Ron Lee, this is the part, this is the one that Ron Lee is infuriated about because people just didn't have a shot. They weren't advised. They didn't know. Just like Draw 176, she hated that one too. I loved it. I thought it was awesome. I love this. I think this is awesome. And yes, people are, and I'll just share this. Sorry. This is me and Ron Lee. Go there, go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to this, watch it. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
But ultimately, I feel for people who don't have their language test because you could very well miss out. It's a possibility. One thing I personally am going to counsel you, okay? This is something that I'm going to counsel you. It's not legal advice. I ring the bell. It's more just good decency. If you do not have a language test written, please do not submit an application. Don't do it. Don't submit an application and say, I will provide my language test later. And I'll tell you something. One thing I think as a part of the wizard that gets you through to determine your eligibility, I think it's going to be just like express entry. In other words, you're going to answer the questions and one of them is going to be, do you have a valid language test? Then it will ask you to input your scores and the, the number of that test. So the, the actual form number. In my mind, I think that's what they're going to do. Don't lie about it just to get in. Highly, highly recommend that you don't do that, guys. Okay? And the reality is you're going to burn up a spot for someone who actually is eligible. And by the time they look at your application, they could very well, with an unbelievably high degree of certainty, reject it because you had no language test and you misrepresented when you were completing your wizard and your tool. Okay? So, so don't do that. No matter which agent or WhatsApp group or whatever tells you to submit your application uh, and then just provide proof that you've registered for the exam, this lawyer right here, this guy <laughs> right here, Canadian immigration lawyer, ex-immigration officer. Yes, I worked on the border as one of those lovely border officers. And I worked downtown with the hearings officers in Calgary while I was going through law school. Um, I was their pro bono slave. <laughs> the hearings officers are the ones that represent the minister in immigration appeals. So that's my background. And I'm telling you, don't burn up spots for others when you don't qualify when you're not eligible. For many of you, you know, th there's going to be other pathways and you just want to get through faster. But if, if, you, if you don't have it, don't submit until you have it, okay? That's my only recommendation. You guys can take it for what it's worth. All right, let's, that was, that was a lot. I know we covered a ton. Okay, let me go back here and let's, there's Ronna Lee. Let's get back to the other documents, okay? So language test is mandatory. You guys saw the scores. If you're essential worker, um, frontline worker, CLB4 is all you need. And if you are, uh, if you're an international grad, then it's a CLB5, which is like, it's peanuts. You guys couldn't get into school if you didn't have that level. Okay, edu educational credential assessments. We don't need those. Letter of explanation. This is the one I love the most. Sometimes you're just going to have to explain things, right? Sometimes it just doesn't fit. There's something in the form. This is where I actually have templates. And I tell my clients, absolutely, use these templates. Use these templates to help you to know exactly how to craft your letter of explanation. And I go through in, in very, very detail in this and you can see here, this lesson alone right here is 28 minutes long, all designed to help you understand how to do your letters of explanation. Okay, so there's basically the documents. I think that's what they're going to look for. I don't think there's anything else that I haven't listed in that list that you will require. I guess one thing I would point out that you have an obligation to show that you're residing in Canada. And if that's the case, then you could possibly be required to provide like um, a utility bill right? The same things that immigration asks you to provide. Now, I'll give you a little pro tip. I'm going to give you guys a pro tip. I'm going to shift back here because I'm all about teaching. I'm all about teaching. There is a wonderful document called the EE completeness. It even pops up. I've gone here so many times. The Express entry completeness check. R10, regulation R10, where completeness checks, they do not exist, okay? But what this site does, applications for permanent residence subject to the completeness check, what this does is it gives you instructions on what the documents need to look like. So I have all of this in detail and I've got it on steroids. Like I've got so much more in the course that will be in the TR to PR pathways course. But here, this site is where you go to get information on medical, medical exam information, um, what your police certificates need to look like. Um, everything that you have here, there's work history, there's everything, okay? Passport, what they're looking for, work experience. The individual that was involved in creating this program is the same one that created Express Entry. And so that officer is going to take many of those 
processes involved in the Canadian Experience class and move those over and make them a part of the TR to PR pathway. So if you're looking for information, that's where you go to get help with what my documents need to look like, okay? Obviously, I'm also gonna encourage you guys, and I can't tell you how much, if you go and you go to the site and you go to uh, the homepage right here, it might be, I don't know if this link is there, but go to my website, click on this link right here, and leave your email, and I'll notify you as soon as the course is available. This course is going to be available before before things go live. So it's going to be there to help you and support you. Okay, let's keep going. We've talked about the documents. These the first two questions were awesome because they really helped so many questions. Like, they really help people. Like, we're still holding at 650 people. This is insane. But understand, you guys, that this is as detailed, high level as I can possibly make it to just literally share everything that I know. I'm not holding anything back. I guess what I am holding back is what you actually have to put in the forms. That's going to be in the course. And remember, the course is not only going to be like Express Century, 56 videos that you can watch at your own pace that will be opened up, but it's also going to be a master class where I walk you through everybody in the group, everybody in a private group, right like this, where I'm showing you the same things, where I'm pulling in questions, that is what it's going to be, that masterclass with me leading the charge. Okay? All right, let's start. Let's get to some more questions. And thank you for your patience. Hopefully, you guys can appreciate the questions. I know I'm not going to get through all of them, but what I've released and what I've unveiled to you guys is literally everything. Okay, now let me conclude that cycle. So the list of forms, the documents are going to be there. You're going to be uploading them, okay, electronically. There's going to be a spot. You're going to upload it. There is going to be sections in there where it might be for extra information, like the client information section in Express Entry. Many of you don't know what it looks like because you've never received an ITA, right? But there will be a spot where if you're just not sure or you have to explain something, there will be a section for you to upload information, whether it's about family members or whether it's something within your application that you just need to explain. That's where my letters of explanation section are, is going to be so helpful. All right, let's keep going here, okay? Um, wow, great questions. Okay, I think we've talked about this. Can someone apply both as an English speaker and French speaker, two separate applications? You know what, guys? If there was a way to submit six different ones all at the same time and you were willing to pay the $1,040 or whatever it is, $1,050, it is, you can submit as many as you want. Heck, you could apply through the CEC if you got an ITA. Ralph, I'll give you a shout out. There's my good buddy up in Edmonton. Um, okay, yep, Ben, there is no draw whatsoever. Basically, what happens is May 6th, it's going to go live, and then it's going to be this mad scramble. It's going to be freaking crazy. So everybody's going to be scrambling to get, them, get their information filled in and submitted. But those who take the course with me are going to be the most prepared there might be some little adjustments from what I'm telling you, but generally speaking, you're going to have all of the essential documents. It'll be a quick fill it in. Then you're going to submit the documents. Now, here's one piece of advice I want to give all of you guys. Because this is a temporary program derived, birthed out of public policy, there is a very, very strong likelihood it's not coming back. And if that's the case, you've got one shot. So my question for you is, can you take the chance of just rushing through, filling your form out, and putting it in as fast as you can? No, you can't. But if you're prepared, if you start working on those forms that I've already told you, right? I've already told you what forms to work on. You go through, work on those forms, complete them, make sure everything's in place. Go, think about the CEC. Look at the documents that I've shared you with you right now. Start collecting all of them. You're going to be in a great position to start. So those of you, you 650 people that are watching it already are going to be light years ahead of someone else who's waiting to see what's going to happen on May 6th and then just trying to scramble and collect everything. So be proactive. Once again, the masterclass, the advantage is not only will I explain in a video that you can watch whenever you want to, how to fill out the forms, the specific questions just like this will all be answered in that course because, and it's, it's stuff that will be all there to guide you to make sure when that May 6th rolls over, you're ready to go. And because, oh, let me explain one other thing to you, okay? 
I know all of, all of you are watching and you're listening and I appreciate your attention. But understand, one of the reasons why I drifted away from the traditional representation model where I, guys, like I, I was in a, a nice big firm. I had, there was a time where I had seven or eight people in support of the work I was doing. When I left and opened up my virtual cloud-based firm, when I left the previous firm that I was at, at a beautiful corner office, it was a beautiful regional firm. You know, there was just beautiful, like the office itself was three years old, the building, it was beautiful. But the reality was when my clients were interacting with me, they spent most of their time talking with my assistants and things would get missed. And then when the application came to me and I reviewed it at the very last moment, I would catch something and then would be scrambling to try to fix it. I threw all of that away so that I could work directly with my clients. And in our firm, that is why we created the collaborative review so that lawyers could work directly with individuals. Now, with that being said, here's another problem that I had with the with that model. We once had four clients ready to file the parent and grandparent program. It was a it was a lightning fast draw. So I knew everything. I was still on the national executive of the Canadian Bar Association. I knew what was coming. I knew when it opened up. And you guys that were here will remember, it was a mad race to see who could get in and fill the notification of interest as fast as possible. It was crazy. I took the best client for myself, the most important one that needed it the baddest to be able to sponsor their, needed it the baddest, needed it the most to be able to sponsor the parent. And I kept it myself. Well, when it opened up, we had three people in my office that were all trying to submit the application. Somehow, I don't know how it worked within immigration, but I never ever saw that link because I'm assuming they only allowed so many access points from the same IP address. What did that mean? The two that I kept for myself didn't get submitted because I literally did not even see the place to start inputting the information. Two of the other ones from my other support staff that submitted it, they got in. And so there is a massive danger with me. And I know right now, as I open it up, I would probably have about 40 of you right now that want to use our firm for the collaborative review model. We do that. Well, I shouldn't say that. Would, have, would hire us as a regular process, okay? So here's the beauty of this whole process. <laughs> Let me backtrack. I'm, I'm kind of talking in circles here. The traditional representation, there is limited people that are able to prepare and submit applications. Because you are driving the ship, when you retain a firm to help you, they're often going to help to put all the forms together. And then once the forms are all together, then they're going to send them back for you to review. And then you are the one that is to submit those applications, all the forms, the supporting documents. So there are levels involved there that just delay the process. So when are they going to start? Once it goes open, are then they going to start um, working with you? I don't, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work the way the government has set this up. And so that is why we've shifted to the collaborative review because we show you, we demonstrate, we teach you, then you take it. And then with, when it comes to the forms, we review them together to make sure they're correct. We go through the process with you, but we do it in a collaborative fashion with a screen share. And then we know for certain that both you and I, you might miss something, I might miss something, but together between the two of us, it is extremely rare for us to miss anything. They're correct. We know it's good. Even with registering, we go on screen share, we help you, we show you exactly how to do it. So those who want support, we're here and our model is designed, tried, tested, literally since December of 2019, I've been doing this with Express Entry Candidates. So we're ready to provide the support. The lawyers are ready to provide the support. But with the masterclass, you maintain the control of the whole thing. You're the one who submits and the collective group knowledge, everybody piling in, Everybody's sharing what they've learned about the process, what they've heard, what they've learned. Everybody works together. And then you guys are all ready May 6th at whatever, 12 a.m. To, to get in there and start submitting your documents and being the first ones in. That's why I'm doing this. So that you're not waiting. Let's say I've got 30 people. Who do I choose? Who's first? First in, first out, just like the government? Well, how fair is that? You're still paying me the same amount. So because of that, in our collaborative review, all of our clients work on their documents on their own, and then we schedule those calls to review them, and we can do those bang, 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 bang. All right, there you go. There's, that's the explanation. That's the pitch. And, and that's why 
you have to be really, really careful when you're using a representative. Which, what I want you to ask them is, how many people do you have that you're going through this process with? How many staff do you have to submit it? And remember, if someone is, is helping you to, to put the application together and they say, oh, I'll just do it with my own email address, well, that's not how it's supposed to work. It needs to be your email address. Okay, continuing on. So you submit everything, you upload everything. Next step, you sign off electronically. You say, yep, everything I attest that everything is true, correct, and complete. Then after that, you click, you go through the attestation, you read it, you agree, and then you remember, you also have to pay your fee separately, probably through the, uh, the payment portal that is through the IRCC website. You'll probably have to go in with your credit card, get the receipt in advance, and then instead of Express Entry or the other applications where it's automatically a part of it, you need to be able to do, um, I think, the fee receipt probably separately and then include a copy of it in your application. Don't forget that. Once you've got that, the application is submitted, then you will get an email back to your email address with your acknowledgement of receipt. At this stage, once you get the AOR, <clears throat> then your representative can link that application back to the representative portal and kind of babysit it till the end. But guys, I'll be honest. Like, what good does it do to have pay someone to babysit your application at the end? You know, I, you know, at the end of the day, you guys can do that yourself. But that's my opinion. And there's lots of my colleagues that just really feel it's important for the lawyer to manage the whole process. There are tons of consultants that love to do that as well. Very few people do what I do, and that's fine. I totally understand that. But for you DIYers, ask those questions. Please ask those questions because you could find yourself being the 30th person to, on their list of priorities that you're paying the, the, that consultant, you're paying the lawyer the same amount. Make sure that you know where you sit in the process. And if you are using that lawyer, make sure that you're confident that there isn't going to be a significant delay getting your information to you so that you can then file it on your own, okay? There's nothing worse than having to rely on some third party and having your life in their hands. That's why I allow my clients and that's why I love for my clients to have control of their whole process. So they value the, the help that an immigration lawyer like myself and my team, but they want to retain control. Okay, and, and I know I haven't got into a ton of the questions. <clears throat> I'm going to get a little drink here. But understand, guys, I'm prepared to stay here as long as I need to. And we're still sitting at 645 people watching. Okay, let's dive into some more questions. I think I've, let's see, what else am I? So you get the AOR back and then you wait. And if the government needs something from you at that stage, it will come via an email to you, to that email address. Maintain control over that email. That is yours. Do not let your representative create some, some new email that is not yours. You use your email address. If they say, oh, we'll create a separate one, then tell them, screw you. I'm not hiring you. You guys maintain control and they can work off of the information that you get. Okay? All right. Moving forward. Let's see. Um, okay, here's a good question. Armin says, what time in May 6th the program will open? Don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer to that one. That's a good one. <laughs> Jamel says, thanks for being the good news. Been waiting since for 7 p.m. I'm going to put it right. Oh, that's not the one. This one. <laughs> that's the one I wanted. <laughs> okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, okay, Schwab says, big thank you for your effort. Can we apply from Quebec? I think we talked about that one. You make sure that the settlement plan, and will you include in your DIY course how to write good intent to move letters? Yes, I absolutely will. Thank you for pointing that out. For those who are in Quebec that are looking at moving outside, yes, we will definitely address those. Okay. Oh, Nina. Awesome. Hey, Mark. Looking forward to your expertise views. Nina is an immigration consultant. She took my course. I do not hate immigration consultants. All of you out there, please understand that I don't. Nina is awesome. She cared enough to take the course. I've had law firms take the course. Like my express entry course is what I'm referring to. But I love when other representatives come and I can teach them and I can just help to raise the bar, right? So everybody is open season. And, and in this situation, Nina was one of the consultants that took the course with me. So happy to have her as a part of it. And, uh, and she's doing things that are right. But what I do hate is the awful, no good, awful, awful, awful consultants who do not have a clue what they're doing that solely are acting as consultants to, to get money, as much money as they can from their clients and really do not care to take the time that Nina did to learn and understand and represent her clients properly. So many times I've seen um, 
representatives, consultants, especially, and I don't mean to slag them. I don't want to slag them, but I've seen train wreck after train wreck after train wreck with ones that don't care. And they learn off of the backs of their clients. If you get 10 people that are refused for doing one thing wrong, eventually you learn. Whereas those consultants that take the time to learn the regulations, to learn the law, to understand what it means, like the lawyers are trained to do in law school, well, we don't, the reason I can advise you now is because I know what the regulations say. I know what's required to prove it. That's why I'm able to help you guys to understand before the program's even opened, what it's going to look like. And because of the, th I don't know how many hours, you know, as a national chair and my table officers, how many hours we've put in countless hours and guess how much I'm paid. If, if we didn't have 645 people on here serving as the national chair of the CBA, it is a pro bono job. I'm not paid a dime. In the past, we used to have a free flight out to Ottawa to have meetings with the government there. Now it's all Teams meetings and Zoom, but it's been wonderful. I had a meeting today, the technical briefing. I have a meeting tomorrow with them about those refusal letters. You guys have received those, those refusal letters that say nothing in them. We're meeting with them tomorrow to give our feedback on why we think those suck. Why should you have to request an ATIP to get the real reasons? We're having a meeting with them to talk about that. And they, this, this, the immigration department is awesome. They are so good. They're doing their very, very best. And I really don't want you guys to slag them. Even this program, like all of this. And then next week, we're, minister, we're meeting with the minister's chief of staff to talk about the budget, 2021, with those millions of dollars that are being poured in. So all of those are free. All of those are pro bono. All these videos that I do, I'm not getting paid for. So anyone that says Mark's just trying to line his pockets with money, well, Screw you. <laughs> you have no freaking clue. If I, if you, my family who's outside of my office right here in my house, who have hardly seen me at all over this last two weeks, you can ask them. I'd pull them in, but they'd be too embarrassed. So understand that this is genuinely me legitimately trying to help people. Do I want to help, assist, represent every single person on this channel and every person that's ever applying for immigration? Yes. Why? Because I truly feel like I can help them that going through the process of me supporting them, they will be able to produce a better application than they could on their own and increase their chances and avoid all those problems. That's why I do. Do I want to represent everyone? Yes, I do. Do I want every single person in this class to put their email in right here and register right here for the new pathway course and be a part of it? Yes, I want you to because I believe it will help. Okay, let's continue on. I need, I wanted to, yeah. And so Niraj right here, I'm going to ring the bell, my friend. How in the world am I going <laughs> to? Oh, my goodness. That is that is the best ever. Niraj, that is, oh, my goodness. I'm going to give you one of these. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. It's been such a long day. That is the best question that I've had all day. That is so awesome. Niraj. <laughs> no, I don't think you are. <laughs> Actually, I'm just kidding. Maybe you do. Maybe you are able to qualify Niraj, but I know nothing about you, my friend. You look like a great guy, but <laughs> uh, Jomi's been on before. He's like, welcome back. You, you watched so many. Okay. Wes, no, you don't need that. Um, how do you check your completed program leading towards skilled trades? Vivek, they're going to be very, very loose with that. The program, whatever you do, that program, like, like basically the details are going to be in the guide that's released. What Vivek is talking about is those individuals that are going through one of the pathways for a skilled trade. And in order for you to go through, your education has to match, right? And so they're going to look at the requirements in that province that are required to obtain the, the experience in that trade. That's what they're going to look at. Okay. So for, for trade level people, um, to a large extent, and you're, if you're trying, and remember, you're, we're trying, we're talking specifically right now about the education. So who completed an educational credential and are now working in, in, in one of those trades. Okay. That's what they're talking about here, but I suspect it's going to be tied to whatever's required to practice in that trade in that province, okay? Good question, Vivek. That's one that has not been answered and I have not dived into. Um, yep, Ali says, part-time work acceptable? You bet it is, Ali. Um, okay, only did one-year program. I have a valid job. Am I eligible? Nope. 
unless that program was a degree. In other words, associate degree, master's, um, PhD, eight months, one year is not enough, Hannah, if you're going through the, uh, the programs for, uh, well, for the international grad, okay? Now, remember, when you, with your job, if you're looking for essential workers, uh, if you're an essential worker and you fit within one of those knocks, then that might be a possibility. Okay, yep. <laughs> Yaren says, exciting. Yep, accepted. Hello again, Mark. Good to see you, Nessa. Welcome back. Okay, Nessa is one. You can give some thumbs up, Nessa, too. She's in the midst of, uh, of the program, taking my express entry right now. Okay, we got lots of there. Hello, <laughs> George. George is also a past uh, a, a student in one of my courses. He said, I'm CNN. That's awesome. You guys are so funny. Okay, uh, yep. Documents along. I've explained that. Yes, you do. Um, Mark, okay. Man, <laughs> Mangender, good to see you, my friend. Okay. Um, okay, let's take a look at Menender here. How are you? Just want to know that I've done eight months business management course from Saskatchewan Polytechnic. Am I eligible for a student stream? Guys, once again, remember, only if you were issued a degree, only if you, if you were issued a degree, associate degree, bachelor's, master's, okay? And it's really weird, but I guess it comes down to maybe you had credits from something else and then you brought them over. And like, this is really tough for me to understand the context. Some master's programs are a year, right? And so that's really what it comes down to. Um, but with yours, the course from Saskatchewan Polytechnic, I would need to look at it. I'm assuming that's probably a, uh, a diploma course. Um, and um, there, it's likely that it may not, Menender, but I recommend you do one of these. My friend, book a consult and let's take a look at it. Okay, uh, and then people are saying, how do I apply through the pathway? I've showed you guys that. Um, <clears throat> let's see right here. Um, Okay, we've talked about this. Nina, Nina says, quick question, will part-time work count for international students? Um, yes, we've already talked about that. Yeah, part-time is, is just fine. Bridging open work permit applicable to the public policies? Yeah, you can do whatever you want, right? Like like the bridge, any work that's valid, authorized work, you can do. And if you're on a bridging open work permit, that works. Okay. <laughs> when Ginger says, we had a consultation yesterday. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. I've been busy, you guys. I've been busy, very busy. And I can see people, like big props to all of you. We're still at 610. So unbelievable. Usually once we get to the Q&As, and I've put a ton in the beginning so that there'd be a ton of value for you guys. But, um, but the Q&A, the fact that there's still 610 people watching live, well, that's more power for you. And I will do everything that I can to make these questions as applicable to everyone. So, so hang tight. Okay. Um, okay, let's see here how to check... Uh, that our completed program is leading towards a skilled trades. We would need to actually look at all of the details. And so it's not something I can answer right here. Um, okay, Hin says, can we change the job off, uh, the job after we apply for the PR? Yeah, there's no restrictions. You can work in whatever occupations you want, Hin. You don't have to stay with the same employer, not at all. Those rules are so loose, like you could have a, you know, a five hour, you, I think, and don't quote me on this, okay? But I think as far as a job, those of you who say, oh, I don't have a job, I'm laid off. Even if you got a job working casual two hours a day, two hours a week, personally, it says you're employed. It doesn't have a restriction for full-time, part-time. So even the minutest work, if you can get a job from someone who is employing you, um, and remember, you need to be employed from the beginning to the end. Yes, you can switch jobs. They're not going to force you to be there, but don't leave some big gap of five or six months and then magically get another job for an hour right before they approve it. I would avoid that. But yes, you can have the ability to switch. Yep, you do. Ben Jose is answering questions. I'm assuming Ben, ben Jose is probably a consultant. <laughs> and Aziz, my, <laughs> my friend, I will call you Aziz and I will show you how this is all going to work for you. So thumbs up for you. Okay. Thumbs up. Okay. Um, okay. Shaw says after applying, it takes six months for the application to get processed for PR. So can't the applicant visit home for a few months within this process time? No, you can't because you need to be employed at the time in which you submit and at the time in which it's approved. You need to be employed. And if you give up your job and you go home, you could very well lose your spot. Okay, I answered the forms to fill. <clears throat> Background declaration, the IMM8, additional family information, 
um, well, possibly the schedules, travel, the travel form, the uh, stat statutory dec declaration of common law union, if you need that. So additional family information, those forms. Okay. Okay, <laughs> George. <laughs> You guys are hilarious. Maybe it's because it's so late. How soon can I quit my job after the date I submit the PR application under recent graduates? Under recent graduates, you can't quit your job, George, until the approval happens because you must show that you are employed at the time in which you apply and at the time in which the application is approved. So don't quit your job. Don't quit your job. Okay. Okay, so I will point out uh, Ansinarev. Ansinarev or Palma. <laughs> Can you enlighten us which knock code is for the international students? There are no knock codes for international students. Anything is fair game, you guys. Isn't that nice? You just have to show that you've got your graduation, that you have completed it. That if it's, un if it's not a degree, it has to be two years. And then after that, you can work wherever the freak you want. <laughs> you can work wherever. Like I said, an underwater basket weaver that's working full-time, part-time, I guess, potentially. I'm not saying that this is 100% sir. I'm just taking it as far as I can stretch it based on the regulation, well, based on the policy directives. You could do it, you could be an underwater basket weaver working a couple hours a week and you're employed as long as you consistently have those couple hours a week. As far as I'm concerned, if that, if that employer is willing to give you the letter, then you can roll with it. So there we go. <laughs> Good question. Um, okay, we answered that one. Uh, PCC, get it. Get it right now. Don't wait. There's no reason to wait. Just get it. If you're not going back to that country, you don't need it in Canada. Canada doesn't require you to get one from the RCMP here. Um, and then as far as medicals, like I said, we'll see what happens with the medicals. Um, yep. And here we go. Okay. We've talked about this. If you've got a situation where you're finishing the program, you won't have the completion until mid-May. Can I apply even before? You're taking your chances if you do, okay? You're taking your chances. If you have no other options, and if you see that the number of total of applications is dropping like a rock, well, first, okay, take the master class. Let's work through and get all those forms and documents all prepped right away before May 6th. We take a look at all those forms, all of those that information, get it all ready, and then watch it and monitor it. And if you see after day one that there's 30,000 people um, left in your category, then you can see, oh my goodness, maybe I just have to take a chance and then put all the evidence in the world showing you've graduated, all the letters from the school, everything, and then include the formal official transcript completion. Maybe that's the route you go, but I can't advise you to do that with a with 100% degree of certainty, K. It just depends on the circumstances. If you truly feel you're going to lose out. Now I know, K, you and many other people, you guys still have a shot. You're young, You've got a post-grad work permit waiting for you. You have probably three years still ahead of you and a CEC that's absolutely there. So you decide if you want to tie yourself up in that program, you know, uh, with the uncertainty. So that's all I can say about that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, Niraj, you're so funny. Um, okay. Greetings from Ontario, Mohammed. <laughs> Aziz. <laughs> You're awesome, my friend. Um, okay, we'll keep going. And if I've answered one of your questions, I'm going to bypass you guys, okay? So I can get to other ones. Because realistically, I'm going to stay on here as long as possible. And every two seconds, I hear another another posted question. Like, it'll be midnight by the time I'm done. And in all honesty, no one will want to listen to these questions. So I think after I'm done this, I'm going to probably take all the questions and cut them out of the recorded video because it'll be like three hours. We're already at an hour and a half and I've got lots of stamina. I am going strong, you guys. Apparently, we're back up to 640. Okay, let's see what we've got. Okay, here's a classic. Jack says, book sell pip May 22nd. Given that it will probably take about a week to get the result back, is it too late for the international grad stream? Jack, I don't know. But you guys, I want to point something out to you. Here's a reality that everybody has to take into consideration with the international grad. Very few of you who haven't already received an ITA through those big draws, okay, those very few of you who do not have a language test already are in the same boat as Jack. None of you anticipated that you would be able to apply now. You all expected that you needed to apply for your, your um, to write your test when you were closing in on that one year of skilled work experience in Canada, right? So who would have anticipated this? So personally, I think 
that there's going to be a large number of international grads that simply don't have their tests. Okay. And so Jack, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that May 22nd is still going to work. Uh, you know, and if, and if you have to go a week after that, I think there's still a shot because many other people, the bottleneck right now, the squeeze point is those language tests. That's what's holding everybody back. And you guys can see there's only so many spots to take tests. Like there's only so many, so much room. And, you know, the reality is you, you fly to, to, you know, you fly to a different country and try to take the test there and then fly back in. Well, I guess as insane as that sounds, I guess that's a possibility for people. Yes, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? You fly over to another country to get your test. You come back, you go through the quarantine hotel. Well, who cares? You're here. As long as your employer is willing to give you that little bit of a break. And then you make sure you're employed at the time in which you submit the application. That's one strategy, although it's crazy to think that people would have to expose themselves to the virus and to COVID just to get a language test because they can't get one here. But, you know, the U.S., that's one option. Oh, I don't like that at all. Um, okay, here's another good question. They're talking about breaks. If I worked from April 2020 till May 2020 with a three-week break, does this count as one year? I think you probably meant April 2020 to May 2021 with a three-week break as one year. I am an uh, occupational therapist and I am bilingual. Well, for you, you're going you're gonna to go through the process and make sure you apply under, well, you, you're going to go through one of the streams. Oh, I don't know what the best strategy is for you, but all I can say is three weeks, it depends what the break is. Was the break where you were laid off? Was the break where you were, um, where you were unemployed? Well, I guess it couldn't be 2021, right? Okay, because, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is how late it is. It's April the 21st today, so it couldn't have been 2021. So maybe April 2019 is what you're talking about. But a three-week break, it really comes down to whether or not that break was paid. And if, it's, if it was a paid vacation, it's continuous, then I don't consider it a break. But remember, breaks are irrelevant for the purposes of this. You can add, as long as it was in the past three years, you can add up whatever work experience you need. If you need to get some more work experience now, um, you know, that's, that's in one of the essential um, frontline occupations, you know, and you work through that process, you can combine both of them, okay? So yeah, your situation, it really comes down to, um, yeah, it really comes down to whether or not you are going to be able to um, prove that, yeah, you've got the full year within the three years. If you were paid and it was a, a, a vacation, you're not going to have a problem. Okay, let's keep zipping through here. Okay. Uh, okay, we've got some people that are multiplying. Lots of how can I apply. Okay, this person says recent grad in April need work permit on 6th of May. There, No, if you've applied for your postgrad, or even your authorization, your study permit's still valid. Like you have the ability um, when you submit your, your postgrad application, the date that you submit it, you know, you're still in valid implied status. Even through that period, we, this question came up today. Um, authorization to work. You, you know, if, you are, if you're a recent grad, there is a period there. Um, there is a period of uncertainty, right? But ultimately when you complete and if you're working continuously and you've applied for your postgrad, then you're going to be in a position where that is acceptable, even if you don't have your work permit in hand. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Um, okay. Post-grad diploma. Diploma. If it's diploma um, and it's not a degree, they specifically state degree. The only way I can interpret that is that it's a degree, an associate degree, right? Those are the examples that they give. So if it's only one, then as an international student, I don't think that qualifies. Is the current student with one year experience in other essential work on study permit eligible? Yes, Ikram. That's what I pointed out. You can count your experience over the past however many years that you've been on your study permit as long as you accumulate that one year within the three-year period. <laughs> Yaren says, would a 40-plus international student PhD have a chance <clears throat> if you can show that you've completed it, right? If you've completed your credential and you've just got a job, then age is irrelevant. That's what is so beautiful about this. 
You could be 95, Yaron, and you're still fine. Age doesn't factor in. Okay, so, you know, uh, this individual says, I currently live in Toronto, but I work remotely and the company is Montreal-based. Am I eligible with uh, regards to currently employed requirement? Well, yeah, you are. Once again, though, at the end, you have to demonstrate that you have an intention to reside outside the province of Quebec. <laughs> Sounds to me like you've got a pretty strong intention if you actually live outside. Okay. And Janae says how the portal will look like. I think I answered that question. It's going to be its own new, uh, pro it's going to be its own new page that you're going to go through. Okay. How fast will fill up? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Do I think the website will crash? I guess it's possible, but understand this is so much more, you guys, than just a notification of interest, right? It's so much more than just, um, you know, like the whole problem with the portal uh, is that you've got what's essentially an old computer with a hard drive that is at 95% capacity. You guys have all had those when it keeps crashing and breaking because it was never designed to handle the volume that it has. Well, they're frantically pulling data out, pulling space out so they can free up space on their hard drive. That's really what's happening. And what you probably saw if you paid attention to the last national, uh, the budget that was released just only days ago, that budget clearly indicates that they have got millions of dollars they're pouring into the new system to transform the new electronic filing system. But at this stage, huh, Dan, it's entirely possible that it crashes. I bet people, here's my thought, okay? I bet people that are that are trying to qualify for this program, I'll bet you any money if they don't have their language test, everybody is praying, <laughs> praying that the site will crash, right? That it will stop people from applying so it will buy more time. So hey, you know what, Dana, why not? Maybe it will crash. All those that don't have, that don't have language tests right now, give me a thumbs up if you are hoping that it will crash. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's zip through here. Um, and anyone who's asking questions specifically about their unique situation, once again, I'm just going to ring the bell and encourage you guys to go over here, go to the website and um, click on book a consult and we can go through everything right now and I can help to answer those questions that you're asking. Okay, because we're not going to dive into specifics here. There's too many people to dive in at that level. Um, okay, Nessa said my spouse will be the principal applicant in the essential worker stream. <laughs> awesome, Nessa. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, Lucy says my permit expires July 31st. Oh, I'm going to give you one of these ones, Lucy. Does the new policy give me the bridging work permit? That was another question that wasn't answered. I'm going to get back to you on that one. At this stage, we have to assume that it's probably going to do that. Why? Because once you submit your application, you're going to get an automatic, well, you're going to get an acknowledgement of receipt back via email. And I personally think that there's a very, very good shot that you may be able to use that, that program to extend. I can't think of a good policy reason. If public policy says, Lucy, that you are a candidate that they want to land this year, why in the world would they not also allow you to have a bridging open work permit under the same conditions that a CEC or, or anyone else has, right? So I'm going to say that there's a very good chance that you'll be able to do it. But Lucy, you will know by the time, by July 31st, maybe the guide may even, that they release, may even have answers to those questions. Okay, we talked about Quebec situation with international students. Um, work through employment agencies, it depends, Emmanuel. More than likely it will. More than likely it will, right? Work is work. And so, but who's going to provide you with the reference letter? And sometimes that's what I talk about in my course. Um, and that's what I'll talk about in this new one right here, where all you need to do is click on this link. So go to wholethelaw.com. And I'm not sure if you can actually see that. I'm going to pull this down a little bit. You can't see the link there. Wholethelaw.com is the website right up here. And then when you're here, all you have to do is click on this link and register for the course. Like, well, basically give me your name and your contact information. Um, and sometimes spam. Sometimes uh, email gets spammed out and I'd hate for people not to, to not know when I go live if my email I send you goes to junk. So you can leave your phone number here and we'll put you in the, in the ability for us to text you. Although with 
Well, now we're starting to drop off because even people are getting tired, but still it's crazy that there's 557 people that are attending this live. Okay, so yeah, go here and uh, and then we can walk through that because there's a lot of aspects of this, obviously, that um, you know we, we have to sort through. But often it will, I would probably have a dual letter for you, my friend, one from the agency who deals with your pay and the other from the actual employer who oversees your duties. I'm suspecting that's how it'll work. Okay, documents, we covered that. 40 plus, we covered Yaren's question. Um, some people are asking about CEC. At this stage, I don't know, Shane. Like, if everybody piles through this program and there's fewer CECs, it's possible it could go down, but I'll, I'll really, really doubt, Shane, that it would go down that far. I really, really doubt it would. Okay, and isn't this, oh, Ben is so helpful. He's just answering everybody's questions. Good for you, Ben. <laughs> okay. Um, Susan says, hey, Mark, what should be the best reason for the open work permit for spouses of international students? I'm not quite sure the reason, like if they want to come and work in Canada, if you are applying for one of those open spousal work permits, the C4142, those, those work permits, I recommend that you try to find a job, line up an offer of employment with someone who's willing to hire before you apply if you're outside of Canada. And that sometimes will help as well to show that the person isn't just coming over on an open work permit with nowhere to work and then contaminating everyone while they're looking for a job. So, um, yeah, here's one. Alexander says, hey, can I apply to the essential worker stream, put my spouse as a dependent, and at the same time, he would apply under the grad stream and put me as a dependent? Heck yeah, go for it. Great strategy. Multiply your effort. You're just going to have to, ex you have to remember that you're paying an extra $1,000, you know, $1,040. Okay, and anyone like Niraj, now Niraj is actually uh, putting more information here. I'm going to ring the triangle. <laughs> it was quite funny though when you didn't provide any background information. Um, but this uh, is the course free. Hell no, Dana. The course is most definitely not free. Are you freaking insane? <laughs> no, it's not free. It is absolutely going to be paid. It's going to cost. And probably it's going to be comparable to, the, to my express entry course. More than likely... I'm probably going to charge about $350 for it. And if you go here, <laughs> oh my goodness, that's another awesome question. If, if you go here to, um, let's go to the main site. Okay, so here's the site. And if you, if you go here and you see the courses, there's the pathway. And you guys can actually check this out. Here's the express entry course. There's an LMIA course for high wage positions. And this one is coming soon, the spousal sponsorship course. I'm working all this. The spousal actually got sidetracked because of this. I was getting ready to release the spousal course. <laughs> so go here, click on get the course, all right? And then you'll see here, here's in information. I did a video talking about it. And you can see here the master class is $347. It's US because that's where it's, it's held. You can reserve a spot right now for this one. But guaranteed, the, the, the course that we're offering here is probably going to be similar. And um, trust me, you guys, this isn't, <laughs> that's awesome, Dana. Hey, it's a fair question. It's a fair question. I don't mean to belittle you. Um, but if you guys had any clue how much time it takes me to put those together and my own time, like this, I'll do free because there's like 550 people watching it and I can amplify the answers that I'm giving. But a course where I'm diving in deep, yeah, it's definitely going to, there's going to be a cost to it. Um, okay. Okay, so Chris is giving a, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a generic answer. So international student who graduates April 30th, start work May 3rd, implied status, CLB 5, apply for the new program. If you've got your language test, man, there's, like, I can't tell anyone, I, I have to ring the bell. I can't say, yes, Chris, you qualify. That would be what I'd consider legal advice. And if I flipped over here, I think I've got it on here, right? Yeah, at the bottom. You guys actually can't even hardly read that. Man, I got that really small, don't I? <laughs> that is so small. Let's let's enlarge it just a little bit so people can actually see what I've got there. So this basically says this video is provided for information purposes only and is not legal advice. If you want to discuss your particular situation, book a consultation at www.holthylaw.com forward slash consultation and we would be delighted to help you. <laughs> So, so this is definitely not legal advice. And so in a person in that situation, similar to it, not knowing anything else, 
may have an opportunity. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Wow, I can't believe the questions people are still posting. Remember, if you posted one before, um, more than likely I'm not going to ask. I'm going to try to give as much people the opportunity because I do need to function. And I'll be honest, I never even had, and, and Nisa here, she says, Mark, uh, make sure to register. It's so worth it. I'm in Mark's current masterclass. Yeah, you are, Nisa. And just so that you know, I told I told you guys I hadn't even had lunch because it was such a busy day. I showed them my my chicken breast that I cooked that I never even got a chance to eat. Well, Nessa, I was so tired. I had a 25, I had a 25 minute nap from when our class ended and I got up and I'm so grateful that even that 25 minute nap gave me a recharge to do this, but um, I didn't have any supper. I had a granola bar and that was it. So I do need to still eat tonight, but that's food can wait. Sleep can wait because you guys have been so patient to wait for me to get to your questions. I'm going to try to work through them, but thank you, Nessa. I appreciate that shout out. She's in the express entry class right now, this one and um, the, the, the April 19th group. So she's just had day three of one hour sessions. And so awesome. Nisa, thank you so much. Um, okay. This is a good question, Simone. You're not. So if you're on any kind of a leave, if you're on parental leave, you're not eligible. You need to be employed at the time in which you submit your application and throughout. That was a question we asked, okay? And I'm going to focus the questions, guys, to this TR to PR pathways. The questions are going to be focused to this right here. So any questions that don't relate to the Canadian pathways, and really it's TR to PR pathways. That's how I'm calling it. Temporary resident to permanent resident. TR to PR. Essential grads, essential workers. That's what we're covering today, okay? So those of you who are asking questions about other things, I'm going to skip your questions. Remember, every Wednesday this morning at 10, it's open season to answer questions about everything. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, this one, Zion. Um, can part-time essential job be earned under study permit? Yes. Yep, absolutely, it can. Um, yeah, how long the application will take? We don't know. In fact, immigration didn't know. They couldn't even tell us. They said, don't ask that question. If they don't know, I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. And questions like this, Parth, ring the bell, book a consult. I can't tell you particular if you qualify. If you look 6552 from 10 months, do I have to apply under Annex B or international graduates? I don't know what your, what your grad is, right, my friend? I don't know what your program is. Okay. Okay. Link in the description. Well, it's kind of hard, you guys, because... I am broadcasting to Facebook. I'm broadcasting to YouTube. Um, like you can see here, let's see, we've got lots, but I do have, you can see here for Susan. Um, her, she's watching um, from the Canadian Immigration Institute Facebook page. And Simone here is, you know, she's a uh, YouTube like many of you. Um, uh, I, I, so I can't just post a comment uh, myself. So, but what you guys can do if you're wondering about the program, and I think it might have been the question about what, what, what it looks like, this is what you guys need to do, okay? So just Google this. You'll be able to find it, New Pathways to Permanent Residence, or one other thing you can do is to go to my YouTube channel right here and watch the videos that I've already done. If you go back actually here, so there's the live. These are the upcoming ones, Thursday and Friday. Those are going to be a lot of fun. Just did these ones today. Are you eligible? New Canadian programs. Oh, we've got 5,000 uh, 3, views on this one now. If you watch this video here, you'll see in the description, show more, I have the links to the programs right here. So you can get all the links right there. All you have to do is go over to this video right here, uh, which is the one that's big letters. Are you eligible? New Canadian PR program. I go into in-depth a lot of these things. You can go there and access the link, okay? And don't forget, this one here is also quite interesting, the breaking news. I had a lot of fun, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys in on something. Actually, with this one right here, this video, breaking news, I, I watched the briefing at 11 a.m. when the minister, Minister Mendicino, announced this. I watched it, and I told Igor, set up a schedule, just like these ones, set up a schedule, um, uh, a scheduled live session, and then I'm going to talk about it. And when I was talking about this, I was literally, I had about five minutes before to read the announcement, and I literally went through this for the first time, and my reaction was so genuine and honest, 
because it was the first time I was actually able to see the, um, the first time I was actually able to see these lists. And, and so the, the annexes that they have associated with this, we go down here. This is the first time I was reading through these occupations. And it literally almost brought me to tears as I was reading how many people, especially the ones that are these home support workers, like, oh my goodness. Like it just, it, my heart just went out to all of them. And I was so, so happy. And, uh, and so it was, it was just a real genuine kind of raw emotion. And oh my goodness, it was, it was really, really fun. Okay, wow, we're just about to two hours. And guess what? I'm still going strong. And the number of questions are off the charts. I think I will have to shut it down at 10 o'clock, which is about an hour from now. Otherwise, I won't be able to function. And I do have a full day tomorrow and Friday as well. So I better, I better, I better not go too far crazy here. But I'm going to definitely do all I can to get to, the, um, get to as many questions as possible. Do you know what, guys? I'm actually super hot here too. I'm going to lose this jacket. You guys know I'm a, I'm a fancy professional lawyer, right? <laughs> How funny. A fancy professional lawyer who makes it who makes it snow, right? I love that. Actually the fun part would be if I was to uh, was if I was to go through this and um and show you my baby face, but I'm not going to do that. That'd be pretty funny. I love that. I love that um uh whatever, that Snapchat thing that I got hooked up here. Okay, zipping through here. Um, okay, Mantha, nope. If you're laid off, you need to be employed currently. So get that job back. Okay. Um, okay, we asked about this. Medical police, police reports, I've answered that one already. Uh, yep, we can apply through everything, Harris, all the programs. If you meet all the requirements, absolutely you can. <laughs> Owen, oh man, I'm gonna this too. Mm -hmm. you know what? In all honesty, Owen, that's what I appreciate, right? Like you guys are not getting this anywhere. Like you're not gonna get this information literally anywhere. You know, I, I highlighted there's some other like Campbell Cohen, um, Canada Visa has got this webinar that's planned for the 27th, and it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna talk about lots of things. Hopefully, someone's watching this video. I go out of my way to help everybody. I just don't have the marketing budget that Canada Visa does to, uh, you know, to promote these programs. I don't have paid people to just run the CIC news. This is me, one lawyer whose only desire is to be as helpful as I possibly can. And in so doing, hope that people will say, man, Mark is freaking awesome. I am going to hire him. I'm going to hire his firm. I know the lawyers at his firm are as awesome as he is. I'm, I'm not awesome. I'm, okay, that's that's really that's really conceited. That is not what I meant. But what I'm saying is someone who genuinely cares to do this stuff, right? And it's crazy. There's still 531 people watching this. Um, so Owen, thank you because you know I that's what I feel, right? I feel that this stuff is is really worth it. And normally you would have to pay a lawyer to you know or a consultant before they shared this. But well, I want you guys to know. I want you to understand. Okay. Yeah, so once again, we're here with the grad streams. Uh, it really depends. Like, is it a degree? And the problem is when it's called certificate or diploma, that's what really I don't know. The, the, the policy specifically states, and I think it's probably worthwhile for me to show you guys, okay? So I'm going to shift the screen back, and I want to show you what I'm talking about because this is, this, is the, this is the challenge. So let's just go right here, okay? Let's go up to the top. So this is related to, um, this is essential occupations, Let's see, is this one? Oh, this is also essential. Let me go back to the one for, um, <clears throat> for international students. Uh, da, 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 da. I want to show you guys exactly what I'm referring to, which makes it really tricky. So essential, essential, post-secondary, okay? So let's go to this one right here. This is for recent credential from a Canadian post-secondary institution. We go down here to the actual terminology so that you guys can see this, okay? Because it's really, really tough. So completed from a DLI. Okay, and it says what a DLI is, whatever, designated learning institution. It's right here. This is the actual language. This, for all intents and purposes, is the law, you guys. So you have to <clears throat> have been granted one of the following credentials following completion of the program of study from an eligible institution as defined as. So one of these three things, whenever we have an or in here, that means that it's you, you basically... It means that you will have to meet one of these three. One here, two, 
or three. You have to hit one of these. This is what we're getting at, a degree, a degree of at least eight months of duration. That's what we're getting at. They have given example titles. And you can see here, it doesn't say for example. It doesn't say, you don't see EG, example. You don't see um, uh, including or, you know, for example, like this list is somehow open. It looks to me to be pretty closed. Associate degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree, doctorate, okay? So that at least eight months. The other alternative, and this one is skilled trade, and we don't need to worry about that right now. One or more diplomas, and there's a reason they say diploma. One or more diploma certificate attestation. I'll be honest, I, I, maybe this is a Quebec-based concept. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Where the following conditions are met. This isn't optional. This is a mandatory. For diplomas, certificates, attestations. Okay, and if we go back here to the question, it is a graduate certificate is what this question is worded. So we jump back here. Each program of study must be at least eight months in duration. And right here, and, 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 and. The combined length of the credentials must be equivalent to a two-year credential at least 16 months in duration. Okay, and that's why unless it fits the requirement right here of an actual degree, unless there's something that, that clarifies for us in the guide that immigration provides that says that any type of a postgraduate diploma certificate is accepted, there's still a diploma, there's still a certificate. And so the only thing I can do is go by the plain language that is there, all right? That's a really good question, it really is. And my answer right now at this stage is no, until there's some other clarification, okay? Uh, let's keep going here. Okay, and understand, guys, I'm not going to be answering every question. Some people are pointing out, Mark, you missed this, you missed that. Yeah, yeah, Yukon, it's crazy. 489, finally people are starting to drop off because in Ontario right now, the time is... 11.05 p.m. And I don't blame you, but I'm going to stick around here. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I don't know when the program is going to be full. Uh, Sen says, if I get in Canada right now with a visitor visa, can I apply? No, you cannot. <laughs> yeah, Nessa, underwater basket weaver. You got to keep it real, right? Um, okay, so I've talked a lot about, I'm skimming through the questions as fast as I can. If I've already answered it, then I'm going to bypass it, okay? Okay, we already talked about that. It can be part-time. It doesn't need to be full. Okay, Leila says, or Leila says, we're authorized to work. This means people who just graduated and have work yet are eligible? Yeah. If you've just graduated and you've got that proof and you are working, that's all you have to do under the inter international grad. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Lots of people are asking, like, completed a one-year program in insurance. And, and, and uh, no, if it's, like I, like I just explained for education, if you do not have um, the two years for a certificate or diploma, you can't qualify through the international grad category. <laughs> I love this one. This is another awesome one. Ken, what are the chances if I will be graduated on the end of May 2021? Well, you can answer that question one of two ways. One, Kenneth. I think there's a great chance you're going to graduate. You're a good student. You're a good person. And your professors love you. <laughs> whether or not, if you graduate May 2021, whether or not there's still going to be a spot, do you have your language test, right? Is there anything else that would hold you back? There's a possibility, maybe, right? There's a possibility. It depends on all of these language tests and everything. Um, offer letters sufficient to apply? Nope. 
You need to actually be working. You need to be employed, not just with an offer. Okay, and anybody who's asking, do I have a chance? <laughs> Amon, thanks for the thumbs up. Um, if anyone's asking, do I have a chance, book a consult and we can go through it. I don't know processing times. Uh, I'll, I'm just clicking this while I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, I got this. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Simran. <laughs> you can't, I just did it. <laughs> you guys are awesome. That's so funny. I love this. It's hilarious. Uh, CC draws, absolutely, Deval. There will absolutely be more CEC draws. Um, okay, here's the good question I did. Okay. If a person worked as a cashier while a student for two years part-time and then got a job on a technical support, so can they apply at Canadian Work Experience in Essential Occupations? The work experience can be gained while you're a student. The two years is unclear to me. The two years part-time, did you meet 1,560 hours working those part-time hours? That's what it comes to. If you do, and now you're working in any other occupation, who cares? It doesn't matter. So that's the key. You've got your language test. If those two, two years that you worked part-time amounted to 1,560 hours in the previous three years, right? If it's older than three years, then you can't count it. So if it does, then it might be possible. Yep, this person in August, it's going to be tough. Marwa, it's going to be tough. <laughs> awesome, awesome content. Wash hands. I don't know what you guys are talking about. That's so hilarious. Probably something that I should know about. <laughs> okay, I see what's going on here. Was I coughing into my elbow? Oh, man, that's so funny. Okay. Yep, so the links we showed that, Aziz. Um, okay, so Alexandra, what does it mean to be employed? If I'm technically employed but not getting shifts because of lockdown, I'm not laid off, well, then you make the pitch. But one thing I do know for immigration purposes is that when you get that lever, that letter, they're probably going to ask what your hours of work were. And, and you're going to have to disclose if you were not working, even though you were technically employed and weren't laid off. Well, I think you're going to still have a hard time showing that you were employed if you're not actively working. But with that being said, you might be able to make the pitch, right? Because maybe tomorrow you're actually showing up for a shift. It's really hard to say, Alexandra. Okay, thanks for the thumbs up, you guys. Thanks, Jomi. Okay, can you use academic IELTS? No, you can't. It has to be IELTS. It has to be the general one. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Thank you. Good analysis. Uh, yep, temporary layoffs. If you're not currently working, Tamar, it won't work for you. Um, yep, so if you've only got 11 months, even though you're well past the required hours, um, you are not going to be able to apply. The requirement is one year of work. It's just like express entry. You cannot accumulate 1,560 hours sooner than one year. Um, you have to actually work the one year. So that's that's really what I, um, yeah. <laughs> Does food delivery count? Dude, if you're paid and you're, you're employed as an employee, sure. <laughs> Same thing, Yarn. Okay, PhD. Teaching assistant, um, research assistant work, yeah, it's, it, it's valid work if you were paid to do it. Um, even if it was on a study permit, um, it can count towards it. And remember, it's the essential worker, right? Because you need to complete your credential. Okay, um, okay, so we talked about the documents. Uh, what documents to prove still employed? Do I need to submit it along with the form? Um, yeah, you're going to need to include, personally, are you employed? Uh, pay slips, absolutely, those are going to be powerful. Pay slips are the one most important. So reference letter from your employer that's current, saying you're currently employed, and pay slips, for sure. What else? Well, the, the thing for current being, being currently employed, those are really the ones that are the most important. Okay. Okay, uh, Jakob says, I just applied for my work permit. Am I still eligible? Well, did you apply to extend your stay in Canada? Are you here and then you applied to extend? Implied status is work, is valid work as long as you submitted it before your current one expires. And if you're, if you're graduated and you just applied for your post-grad, yeah, absolutely you can. 
Yeah, here's another good one. Hint says, if I want to apply for the international stream, should I be working for an amount of time with the employer before I submit the offer letter? No, you can be just employed the day before. That's what's cool about this. Okay, you're very welcome. There's a thank you. Okay, what if a person is on a furlough? Does it count as employed? You need to be working. You need to be working. Temporary layoff? Nope, that doesn't work. What time will it open? I don't know. <laughs> I'm on implied status. Implied status works. <laughs> did I say starts May 6th and ends May 6th? I hope I didn't say that. Maybe I did. It starts May 6th and ends November 5th. Glad you put that in all caps. That's awesome. You try to do this with, we're still at 440. This is pretty crazy. I think once we drop below 100, then I'm going to shut it down, guys. Okay, international student, let's see here. Okay, this one, Nancy says, international student, applying under the yep, new TR to PR program. Do I need to have my medical submitted along with my application? Should I wait for IRC request them for me? Wait. In this case, in this case, Nancy, you're going to wait because we're not sure exactly what they're looking for. You know, in fairness, Nancy, if you do feel like you're going to meet the program and you've never applied for a medical then I would book it. I would book it um, because eventually you will. But if you've already applied for a medical previously, there's a chance they may not require it. But I think regardless, you're probably okay. Okay. Lots of people are asking, what time does it open? I just don't know. I'll be honest. I just don't know. <laughs> I do need, ah, Red Bull's got too much caffeine in it. Good old water. That's what you need. That's good. Good question, Sharik. Well, we know it's not going to end in a week because the Francophone program, the French speakers, will be open until November the 5th. <laughs> Armin says, I have a group on Telegram. I will add you to that. Thanks. I appreciate that. Hmm. I don't agree with this one. I don't believe it will be full in a few hours. I don't. Why? Because people actually have to go in and upload all their documents. And, you know, I really don't think it's going to be full in, in, in a few hours. That would be truly insane, but I know it's going to happen quick. Yep. I agree, Armin. I don't think it's going to be in a few hours. Uh, I'm slowly working down here and there are just tons of questions, you guys. Um, and I think like in fairness, I think I've probably answered through my introduction and the way I explained everything I think I've probably answered a lot of your questions. And so because of that, you know, if some of you want to drop off and you just don't think I'm going to get to your question, I totally understand that. And, um, you know, because the initial content was definitely covered and answered a lot of these questions. Um, Thelma says, I'm an international student and essential worker. Which of the two would you advise I apply under? You know what? It really doesn't make a difference. Whichever one you feel you have the strongest case towards. Um, yeah, like this, many of you are going to be in that situation. There's nothing stopping you from applying for both. However, the reality is that's like a thousand dollars you're throwing out the window. And, um, yeah, it, it really doesn't matter, Thelma. It comes down to which one you think you have the easiest chance of proving what's, what's required. I'm not quite sure, uh, Ugbo... Uh, what this, uh, Nancy, what this is, uh, for sure. Uh, not exactly mentioned as it was the same knock as home support. Uh, I don't know what PSW stands for. I'm sorry. Um, let me think if I can decipher it. So there's personal care attendant, personal service worker, it was not exactly mentioned, or is it the same knock? It comes down to your duties. It comes down, the title isn't what it's important. It's the duties that you perform and whether or not you have performed, you know, a substantial number of those main duties that are listed in the NOC, that's really what it's going to come down to. Okay. <laughs> Lots of people, international students will be filled in the day. Well, it's a good thing I'm doing the course early before it launches, right guys? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I know lots of people are asking about this. Um, <laughs> well, at least you guys are, you're, I love this. I love this engagement amongst each other. 
This is great. Now I'm scrolling through all these comments trying to find a question. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. Uh, and those people like this, just go to the, the thing and just look and see if 1121 is on the list. Okay. All right. I'll just show you guys how to do this. So, so 1121, that's what we're looking for, right? So on here, here is the list. So I'm going to control find 1121. Nope. I don't see it on the list. <clears throat> that was easy. <laughs> okay. Moving through. Um, what happens if my application, if I apply and in the meantime, the cap is reached? If you apply and you're in, the cap goes down based on applications. If you've submitted it, then you're counted as one of those cap. So if it, if it ends after you've submitted, consider yourself, congrats. Okay, our reminder, we already explained. Yeah, if you're an international grad, you need to be employed. Doesn't matter what the job is. PC Medical. Um... Yep, we've already covered questions about can I count my hours while I was a student? Yes, you can. <clears throat> Talked about the medicals already. Okay, and uh, this one right here, Ali, there is no need to have a medical. My friend, you don't know that. Neither do I know that. There's a, sus there's a suspicion that you may not need the medical at the time in which you apply. You may very well provide it later. That might be the case. But if you've never provided it before a medical, then there's a good chance they're still gonna have you complete it as you're nearing the end of the application process. People who've already done a medical may not need to do another one, possibly, but we don't have confirmation. So Ali, make sure you don't put absolutes out there when you don't know for certain. That's the one main concern. Yep. And you may have heard something from, you know, KPIC or one of the other associations, but understand you cannot jump to conclusions. That may be the case, but please don't tell people absolutes when we don't know, okay? Um, keeping going through here. <laughs> I see a lot of questions that are just you guys talking back and forth amongst yourselves. Um, let's see here. Okay, this one's a tough one. So Hina says here, uh, if a person has a removal orders and his inland spousal application is in process, but is temporary working from last six years, does this option apply on him? Does he go for this PR process? You have to have valid status in Canada. And if you're under a removal order, like it just comes down to whether or not that's considered to be a valid status. If you're a refugee claimant and you have been given a work permit, that's not valid status. So Hina, you probably, in your situation... I would talk to, I ring the bell and talk to whoever's helping you with that removal order, whatever lawyer that can help you. Okay. Here's an interesting one. Anthony says, I have uh, attorney Mark. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Yes, God is my hero too, my friend. I have three jobs. They're all essential, uh, but different knocks. Six months from the previous and seven months for the present. Is that enough? And do I need proof of funding? back up my app. So in your situation, as long as they fit within those annexes, you can accumulate the work experience within the one year in the previous three years with multiple occupations, as long as they're all fit within those annexes. And uh, as far as proof of funds, nope, there's no indication of proof of funds. Hmm. Yep, I showed you where the forms are, you guys. I showed you the ones that I think and the documents. You tell me where else people are, are revealing that stuff to you. Um, okay, so what if I already created a profile on the website or would it be a new platform? New platform, not your MyCIC, and you can leave your profile in. It's not hurting anything. Yep, you can, if AgriFood, you can apply under this one. Okay, um, yep, it has to be a paid position. You can't volunteer. No self-employed. <laughs> Seriously, Ali, what are you doing? You must be a consultant. That's usually how consultants say stuff or someone who has an invested financial interest in providing absolute answers. No, it will not open midnight. For sure, it will open around afternoon. Dude, you do not know that at all. You have no clue that that's what's going to happen. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, let's see what else we have going on here.
Okay, Anne, I'll, I'll address this. Worked as a cook under a study permit. Confirmation only mentioned the title cook. I'm assuming that's kind of your reference letter. Um, total hours, not mentioned job description. The restaurant shut down now. Can I use this? You're going to have a hard time because you're going to have to try to find other ways to prove that you actually worked in that occupation. And, um, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. <laughs> Lots of people about, is it going to crash? You're very welcome. You guys, <laughs> there's definitely some consultants on here. I love you guys. I appreciate you being helpful and being here. What is the fee, Dana? It's going to be around 1,040. The officer kept saying 1,050, but they said that it was going to revert back to the old fee, which was essentially $550 and 490. So that's what I went by. <laughs> yep, Ralph, over 600. We're down to 430 though right now. I can't believe you guys are still hanging out here. This is this is crazy. Um, yep, it's not acceptable. IELTS academic. Okay, I'm a student and also an essential worker. I will be graduating next year. Can I still apply? Understand that there is the essential worker category. As a student, you can count that work while you're on your study permit. It just needs to total 1,560 hours and have one year within the previous three. You need to have the language test done and then you would go through the essential worker category or the, um, depending upon, uh, well, it looks like essential worker. So, okay, let's see. Yep, part-time works, Gus, as long as it's one year and three, 1,560 hours. Temporary layoffs, you're hosed. Get back to work. <laughs> you have to be employed at the time you apply. <laughs> Diogo! <laughs> Masterclass from Mark is the real deal, elbow cough. Freak, guys, I don't understand this. I'm, I'm an old man. Like, I'm turning 49 this year. Do you believe that? So I don't know all these little in, you know, I don't know what that means, elbow cough. <laughs> Maybe elbow cough is like, <coughs> like Mark is a phony and a fraud. Maybe that's what it means. I don't know. It's all good. <laughs> Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep moving. If it's a big one, I'm going to keep moving. If there's a lots in there that I have to unpack. Um, Okay, once again, I'm looking to book IELTS exam, but still unable to book. My question is, 40,000 applications will be submitted in a day itself or maximum in a week. Then how come November? These programs, immigration does not know how fast these are going to be submitted. I know you guys are all talking about them being submitted, and I'll be honest, it will, be go, it will, go, it will go quick. If people go over here, take my course, they, they register for it, and I show them and demonstrate exactly how to do this stuff then for sure they're going to be all ready and pumped up and ready to go as fast as they can submit it. So I believe it will go quickly. But there's still the Francophone programs that are all the way through to November and maybe the healthcare, maybe the healthcare workers, there isn't enough to fill it. Maybe those 20,000 won't fill as fast. The essential workers, 30,000, probably. International skill, skill uh, international graduates, 40,000, probably will go pretty quick. But remember, there are some log jams um, and one of those is the language testing, being able to book. Okay. Okay. Can it be an internship? As long as it's paid, it doesn't matter. It just has to be paid work. Okay. Seriously, it will take two weeks to one month based on several lawyer firms forecasting. Great. I love that. I love the fact they're forecasting. Congratulations, man. Nobody knows. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you're on leave, nope. It doesn't work. Yeah, it is. Cook is not in the list of essential worker. So sad. Okay. So let's take cook 6322. Let's go here and we're going to punch it in here. We're going to go right here. 6322. Okay. What am I seeing, you guys? I'm seeing chefs and cooks and the, they are a part of the... Um, as you go through this, they are a part of Annex A eligible skilled trades. 
So basically what this means is that if you're going through with your education and it matches with these, well, then they're, they're, they're on the list. But I understand, oh, I didn't actually show, but that's okay, yeah. So you have to look, it, it depends on your education now, Roshan. But yeah, for essential workers, it's, it's not. Largely because cooks have options through the CEC. Remember, cooks are 6322, which means they're skilled. So you work for a year, depending upon the draws and how low they go, there's still a possibility. Hmm, yep, if you got employment tomorrow, you bet. Intend to reside? Well, that's where the, the letter of intent, that's not letter of intent, but that's where your settlement kind of plan when you show how you're going to reside outside of Quebec. Okay, Vin says, what if I finished my first degree, then went back for another degree and working with a study permit, am I eligible? If your work experience meets the one year and three, you are. Well, let me qualify that. If your education in the first one meets the requirements. Remember, it can't be before January the 1st, 2017. If you graduated after that date, then yeah, as long as you're employed. And remember, even employed as a student still works. Okay, wow, there's so many questions here. We're still at 418. What are you guys doing? Don't you go to bed? <laughs> I guess it is 8.30 in, in uh, Vancouver. Okay, so hey Mark, thank you for addressing my question this morning. I did a live this morning at 10. Love your content. When you say submitted application for international grad, do you mean application that includes PCC medical? No, there's a good chance that you will not have to include either of those at the time in which you submit your application. But guys, you're going to need a police certificate. Like that's going to be a requirement. If you haven't had a medical, I can't see any world where you're not being given, like where, where, you're, where you're, you won't have to provide a medical at all. It just doesn't exist. If you haven't obtained a medical, then then get one. Um, if you with your police certificates, as long as you don't go back to that country, they're not going to expire. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, this is a good one. Okay, no, the answer is no, Serenivus. Can I apply to a new pathway program without the IELTS TRF? However, I have my online test results due to COVID. My TRF is still in transit. Okay, so so you'll remember, okay, with, with IELTS, they have those online programs. As long as it's an official one and not just the test, then um, with those results, you're going to enter that information in. And I think if you have those results, but you just don't have the actual copy of it, then, well, there might be a chance, right? There might be a chance. But if it's just the test one, the, the version that you're just testing on the site, it has to be a legitimate one, okay? All right, zooming through here. Lots of questions about medicals. What time? We're starting to repeat the questions, guys. Okay, once again, one-year diploma in finance. I've already gone through that in detail. When it comes to education, you can see there's uncertainty. Diploma certificates need to be two years. How the cap works, when every person that submits an application is going to eat up one of those positions on the cap. When it's full, it will close. It's electronic, guys. It can track it almost automatically. The moment someone submits, then it will lock down and then you will no longer be able to choose that option in the list when you're registering through that new portal. Temporary laid off, nope. Medicals, we've talked about that. Uh, you're very welcome, Milton. Volunteer doesn't count, Abina. It has to be paid. <laughs> CC draw. Heck, we just had one just recently, right? So what's the draw going to be? If everybody's piling through here, you know, what is the draw? Let's go round of invitations. Let's go take a peek. Why not? R-O-Y-E-E-I-R-C-C. Whoops. R-O-Y-E-E-I-R-C-C. Let's do that one. Oh, man, I got it all messed up here. R-O-Y-E-E-I-R-C-C. There, that'll pull it up. So the last draw for CEC you can see here it dropped all the way down to 417. If we do another big one like this, well, clearly it made a big jump from before. It went from it went from 400 right here. You can see it went from, if we go down, oh, let's see. I want to go back up. Sorry, guys. Right here, rounds, see previous rounds. 
you can see it went from um, 432, it jumped down to 417 from in one week. But they went from 5,000 to 6,000. If they do another 6,000, I think it'll drop below 400 maybe. Who knows? Possibly. I think that's the case. All right. Hey, I'm answering everything. Why not? Okay. Part-time is totally fine. It counts, guys. Many people are complaining they can't get an English test, which I know is an issue. Yeah, I work in retail, but my knock code's not listed in Annex A. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay, does an IS with two-year diploma, well, private school, is it a DLI? That's what it comes down to. If it's a DLI, then maybe you can. I don't know, uh, Festus, if a completion letter will suffice. Um, you know, I think generally speaking that the degree would need to be confirmed. Like that's that's kind of where I'm at with this. But hey, in some cases, if this is like your only shot, then maybe with that completion letter from the university, you can make that argument, right? You could you could try. Lots of people who are right in that kind of that that kind of realm. Let's see, a lot of these questions are now overlapping, guys. I think we're just about at the stage where I may shut this down. Um, like when I look at all of these, yeah, there's a there's a ton. There's probably a thousand questions here. I bet there probably is. Thank you, Rita. I appreciate that. International grads, Keith, no knocks. Yeah, it is. Quite similar to Express Entry. I'm going to do a different one, Aziz, about the Francophone program. Don't know the time. Uh, academic IELTS won't work. Um, yes, we need general. <laughs> I would not say I'm a brilliant man, but I appreciate the respect and thank you. I need blessings. Lots of the same questions. I'm looking for ones that are new, guys. Same questions over and over. Will new positions like can you can like this this I'm getting all the time. Will job will any job work? Yes, it will. Validity of English test, two years. Let's see. And I appreciate you guys answering each other's questions too. That's really helpful. We've answered about lockdowns and layoffs that they don't work. Okay, we know that the program for international students, it'll either hit 40,000 or it ends November 5th, 2021. Okay, Jada, layoff is not the same as temporary layoff. We are still employed. We are on a temporary layoff because of the lockdown tariff. Can we still apply? You are on shaky ground. If you're not actively working, okay, are you being paid? I don't think you're being paid. Those are the two critical components. And in the discussion, in the briefing this morning that I had, this question came up and that was the answer that was received from the, the person who was leading and answering the questions. And lots of people are asking that same question. And yes, you can apply through both program, any program, you can apply through as many as you want, as long as you're willing to pay the processing fee. You can't do anything other than write the standard test, cell pip and IELTS, or the Frank of, or the French test. That's the only things that are acceptable. And lots of people that are asking, do I qualify? Will unofficial transcript work? Maybe. It might. It might work. Possibly, Khaled, it'll be difficult. It'll depend on how well you can convince them that you truly have a realistic plan of living somewhere else. I love this. Hey, Philip, what's up, bro? I'm going to give you one of these. I love, my, I love my live streams being a channel for communicating with people. This is really cool. Yep, there will be more CEC draws. Okay, here comes the ad. Okay, all right, so let's do the ad. Here it comes. Here's the ad. 
Thank you for promoting me. That is so good. Come to here. Click on the PR Pathways. If you go to the main website, PR for International Students, okay? Click on this, leave your email, and then you can join the masterclass. And then people like this. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out. Wow, I love the support. The reason that I offer those programs, guys, is because I genuinely know they're going to help you. There's so much information out there, whether it's add 33B here, um, whatever it might be, the reality is the reason I do this is because I know that what I'm going to teach you and how I'm going to help you is going to help you avoid the most common problems. There's so much misinformation out there, so much. I created all of this to try to dispel it. There are so many channels out there with helpful people, WhatsApp groups. Nobody knows what this is going to look like. Nobody does. So unless you understand how to read regulations and law, unless you have been in the meetings with immigration, hearing specifically their answers to questions just like these from the source and having had a, a, an unbelievably long history with express entry, which is the next closest application out there, freak, don't trust them. Simple as that. Okay. All right, we are 939. We're still at 400. That's crazy, you guys. What are you doing? Is no one going to bed? Oh, that's awesome. Philip, I'm good, Hazib. <laughs> I love this. You guys just got shout outs. That's awesome. Okay, doctoral students, understand you have to complete it if you want the international grad. Otherwise, you have to show that you have got the requisite one year of work experience and the language test. Um, maybe, uh, maybe if your employer is not like, remember, it's going to be tough. T4 contract letter is proof of work experience. The T4 only shows what you did in the past. Um, contract letters, you really need a letter from the employer, like a current one, because just because you signed a contract doesn't mean you're still employed. I think it, you know what? I think it'd be really, really tough. Okay. We've got lots of the same ones. Okay. Hmm. Can anyone apply with that IELTS score? No, they can't. Nope. Leave is impossible. I've already explained all the documents. Don't have a clue how long it will run. <laughs> <clears throat> you said one postgraduate program. Well, was it a degree? Was it a diploma? If it's a degree, yep, that would work one year. If it's a diploma certificate, probably not. And understand, guys, this is one of the limiting factors for the postgrad, right? You actually have to have completed two years. All the people that only did one are not going to fill up this quota. <laughs> will it suck like PNP? What will it look like? You're just going to have to see, promote. <laughs> okay, we're just about wrapping up here. Well, I think realistically, so if we, if we look at the questions here, actually, I'll click on this one. Is it necessary to have a physical address outside of QC at the time of the application? Um, the, the short answer is it's not mandatory, but you better have a really good plan to show how you're going to leave there. Okay. You need to graduate as a student before you can apply. So anything that is not on the list as an essential worker, you can't apply. Upfront, upfront medical is likely not required, but if you have never obtained one before, um, you're eventually going to need one. I think we've got Nessa. I think we got the documents for you there. Okay. All of these questions are now starting to cycle through as being all of the same types of questions. I haven't seen too many that are actually new now. And we're already just about to two hours, 39 minutes. So I think I'm going to start shutting this down, guys. Um, Suba, nope. Employment doesn't need to be in the same field as education. Um, yeah, I'm really trying to... Um, lots of people asking about when I think it's going to... The, the draw is going to fill. Um, yeah, so application link and forms. Dude, you guys are going to have to register for the course to sort through that stuff. 
So I'm going to plug it again because apparently you guys love when I plug this. This right here, I strongly recommend that you guys consider going here and coming in and taking the course. And I will show you how this all works. Um, list of documents was asked. How long does it take? Okay, I think, I think we're at a stage right now, guys, where I'm gonna wrap it up. <clears throat> I'm just gonna turn this on for a quick second. <laughs> which is like the sign that we are running out. And as I look at these questions,